The following is a presentation of Fox Sports. time in history the wild Oklahoma State Cowboys and the young fearless Washington State Cougars meet head on the Pac-10 Cougars return with eight starters to their offense all-american Kendall Hunter leads the Oklahoma State Cowboys who are coming off back-to-back -back nine win seasons It's a sea of orange welcome for Washington State as the Pokes open their home season. Washington State battles Oklahoma State now. Tailgating alive and well in Stillwater, Oklahoma. It's time for college football 2010. Glad to have you with us here at Boone Pickens Stadium as we welcome you to Big 12 College Football Saturday, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. This evening, Pac 10, Big 12, the Washington State Cougars take on the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Isn't it great? College football is back. Bill Land along with Joel Klatt. Looking forward to fun tonight. Interesting battle here. Rebuild versus reload, I guess, is the best way to describe this one. I think both coaches are looking forward to seeing their players play tonight. The inexperience from Oklahoma State. And in Paul Wolf's third year at Washington State, he's just looking forward to seeing these guys get out there. Have they matured and have they grown as football players? Oklahoma State hopes to be reloading. Nine and four last year. Lost two first-round draft picks to the NFL, as well as their quarterback, Zach Robinson. The new old guy is Brandon Wheaton. That's right, 26 years old. He was the second round pick of the Yankees in 02. This guy is strong armed. He's mature. That's going to help him out there on the football field. He has played meaningful snaps in the second of the Colorado game a year ago. He passed for 168 yards in that game. But this is the guy. This is the key for Oklahoma State. Kendall Hunter, 2008 first team All American, had almost 120 yards per game on the ground in that year. He's going to need to touch the football 25 to 30 times. He's that good. Second only in OSU history, yards per carry Sanders, so you know how good he is. That is great company. For Washington State, it is rebuild. This team and this program has struggled. Three wins in the last two years under the direction of their head coach, Paul Wolf. They think they got a chance to get better, and it starts at the QB position with Jeff Toole. Young kid, but experienced. He has started at USC and at Oregon. He played against Notre Dame as well. He's put on some weight because they're 119th as far as offensive line goes and giving up sacks a year ago. Let's see if he can stay healthy. All right, we get to the defense next when Emily Jones will join us. We're glad you're aboard. Cougs and Pokes. the 2010 season against the Washington State Cougars. Welcome back, everybody. Both of these teams looking to make strides on the defensive side of the ball for Washington State. Nowhere to go but up after finishing last in the nation in total defense, giving up 512 yards per game. Meantime, the Oklahoma State Cowboys hoping year two under Bill Young is even better than year one. They went from 2008 giving up 405 yards per game to just 332 in 2009. That's a jump from 93rd in the country to 31st in the country. For the journeyman defensive coordinator, he says improvement starts up top. Well, I think, you know, we sat down as, as, as coaches and talk about that all the time. And uh, one of the big things we want to do is we want to we want to play. We want to be smart players. We want to be the most intelligent football team in the country. We want to make sure that our players understand exactly how we're doing everything, why we're doing it and not have any doubts about that. You know, and I think that carries over uh, defense is a game of reaction. And if uh, if you know exactly how to do it, and when to do it and so forth, that uh, it you won't be thinking about things. You'll just boom, you'll do it. Bill Young's defense getting its first test of the season here in Stillwater tonight against the Cougars of Washington State. It is the Pac-10 versus the Big 12. Of course, we've got it coming to you live from Boone Pickens Stadium in Stillwater, Oklahoma. We've got the kickoff kick 
coming up in just a matter of moments. Be sure and stick around. It's Big 12 College Football Saturday, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Welcome back. Beautiful night for college football. We're glad to have you with us in Stillwater, Oklahoma, at Boone Pickens Stadium. The Cougars of Washington State against the Cowboys of Oklahoma State University. The season opener here. Paul Wolf looking to turn things around at his alma mater. Last year, 1 and 11, their only victory, a non conference win over SMU in overtime. Did not win a game in the Pac 10. And Mike Gundy starting his sixth season here. OSU coming off back to back nine and four years and a best six win season in the Big 12 Conference for the former OSU quarterback. So both guys certainly want this one to get things off to a good start in 2010. Bill Land, Joe Platt, Emily Jones, and the Big 12 College Football Saturday crew with you as we get ready to kick it off. OSU won the toss, deferred, and the Cowboys will kick off to the Cougars. Bailey with the kick. And it will be a touchback as it is downed in the end zone by Washington State as Galvin says, nope, we're going to take it out at the first and 10 at the 20 yard line. And Jeff Tool will lead him aboard. The six foot three, 214 pound sophomore from Fresno, California. And yeah, Washington State's had some quarterbacks. I, they have. And you're in good company when you're in there with Drew Bledsoe. But for a young guy, I can tell you right now, he's got to control his emotions in the opener. Sometimes your heart is racing. You overthrow your passes in the first couple of plays. Fumble. Loose on the first play. Cowboys look like they've got it. They do as Oklahoma State comes up with it. Hugo Chanasa with a fumble recovery on the opening play from scrimmage. Wow. Wow. Just like the exchange, quarterback, running back exchange. It's the quarterback's job to stick this in the pocket. Montgomery gives a good pocket. If you're tool, you got to extend that ball, see that mesh made. You can't retreat on your finish, full sprint finish, until you see that mesh made. You can see Montgomery and Tool right there talking about it. Boy, that is a huge mistake early in this ball game. Inside the red zone now for this first snap of the year, and the Cowboys and Brandon Whedon leading his Cowboys out onto the field. The 26-year-old former Yankee farmhand, former Dodger farmhand. It's his first football start since on this field playing Jinx High School. In 2001, the state semifinals. Yeah, way back. And delay of game against Oklahoma State. And both coaches Boy. will tell you, what do you want that first game? Well, the keep control free. of the emotions, <laughs> mistake free, no turnovers. And what do we see? The Cowboys get the first big break and then delay of game. Whedon hands it off. Hunter, 15, 10. Inside the five yard line before he is run out of bounds. Kendall Hunter by Tyree Toomer, the sophomore from Bellflower, California, making the stop. And Hunter has him first and goal, a 17 yard pickup. And they're going to play fast tempo offense at the line of scrimmage. Whedon talked to his offensive lineman. I got to say, Hunter looks as good as he has ever looked thus far in his senior season. Cowboys after the turnover, first and goal. into the end zone and Oklahoma State takes advantage of the miscue two plays later leads it six up three yards and a TD for Hunter who in his career now 22 rushing touchdowns it's about the last thing in the world you wanted to see happen on the first four plays from scrimmage if you're Paul Wolf from Washington State Kendall Hunter Nice formation, good scheme, good blocking up front. Gets into the end zone fairly easily for the first touchdown of the year for the Cowboys. Dan Bailey on for the extra point. Expected to go through. He is perfect in his career. 132 straight. Hunter and the Cowboys lead at 7 zip. Big 12 College Football Saturday is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, low price every day. And brought to you in part by Phillips Televisions. So amazing you won't be able to take your eyes off of it. And by McDonald's. Stop in and enjoy the McDouble on McDonald's dollar menu at participating locations. I'm loving it. The 
They're relaxed now, but a moment ago, Kendall Hunter had them all on their feet with back-to-back -back runs, and the Cowboys on our Phillips Television scoring drive, two plays, 15 <laughs> yards, and Hunter, the three-yard TD run. Yeah, I mean, there's not much you can say about that. Clearly, your defense, if you're Washington State, is a little bit shocked. They got to go out there and play red zone right away after the first play from scrimmage, but you got to hand it to Oklahoma State. Rebuilt offensive line, Bill. They were able to get it done. Two carries and a touchdown for Kendall Hunter. And the kickoff by Sharp deep into the end zone. And again, it will be a first to 10 at the 20 for Washington State. Enjoying it all here. Phillips Television's HD. And what a beautiful night for football. The weather has broken about the right time up here at Stillwater, although the Cowboys say they're in such good condition, they were hoping it might be a little hotter because Washington State hasn't had quite the same weather conditions in their summer camp. Let's see if they can get things going. Two back to pass. Looking deep on the sideline and incomplete. No flag thrown. Intended for Daniel Blackledge. Now let's take a look at the Phillips Television starting lineups and the offensive line, those two on the left, Gonzalez and Jacobson, both junior college transfers. They figure they'll help them a bunch. Montgomery, an incredible story at the running back position, the fact that he's even playing, more on that later on. And Karstetter, their leading returning receiver from a year ago. Second and 10 for the Cougars. Tool hands it off here. A jitterbug that time and right into the heart of the defense after a couple of yards is Montgomery and that Oklahoma State defense looking like this Jones Donaldson Jarka and Chadasu had the fumble recovery Thomas Ori Lemon is back after a year of injury he's a stud McGee Martin Thomas and Brown are in the secondary for Bill Young's team Bill Young in his second year as defensive coordinator here did a nice job of helping turn them in the right direction last year defensively and it's third and seven. Tool. Protection breaks down. He's in trouble and sacked at the 21 yard line. No stranger to being on the ground right there. Jeff Tool sacked 53 times a year ago. That was 119th in the NCAA as far as FBS schools. Washington State has got to sure up their protection right there. Good protection as far as secondary play from Oklahoma State on that first play. And Jones able to get in there for the first sack of the year. Reed Forrest, you see the punt totals last year? Absolutely ridiculous. They're hoping their kicks this year of the extra point field goal variety instead of punts. This one is well covered by Washington State. And they do flip the field at least as it's down to the 24 yard line. And Josh Cooper tackled there by Buchanan. 53 yards on the punt that time by Reed Forrest. And our Phillips Television starting lineup for the Cowboys, Martinez, Rush, Garner, Taylor, and Adcock. Yeah, newcomers when it comes to starters for the most part up front. The backs and receivers, you know about Hunter a little bit, and Chelf Cooper and more. They've got really, Dana Holgerson, the new offensive coordinator, Joel says he thinks he's got eight receivers. They'll need them with a the new look offense. They absolutely will. I, I've been surprised with how many backs we've seen in the backfield. It's first two offensive plays, the Cowboys OC, a couple of run plays. Now they'll finally get it out to Hunter on the swing pass. And Hunter takes it across the 25 to near the 27-yard line. Tyree Toomer making the tackle that time for the Cougars of Washington State. And Phillips Television will give us the defensive starting unit for Washington State. The Cougars, who really struggled defensively as well last year. Long's the best up front. Hoffman Ellis is a leader at the linebacker spot. And if you take a look at the secondary, Toomer just made the tackle. Hunter slips off one and drives it across the 30-yard line for Oklahoma State. Toomer again making the stop that time for Washington State. Tell you what, right in the middle of that uh, skirmish right there, right when Hunter gets to the football, 89 Travis Long for Washington State had a chance to wrap him up with the explosiveness of Hunter. Gets him out, gets him into a manageable third down situation. This is what you want as a quarterback. Cowboys, one count here. We know oh, nearly picked off outside as Whedon saw that one knocked away by Hoffman Ellis. Alex Hoffman Ellis, who last year had 84 tackles, their leader. Eyes go straight to the throwing point. You think you can do that in a hitch type situation, but a smart play by Hoffman Ellis on third down, knows it's a passing situation, just reads the eyes of the quarterback, gets out into the passing lane, blocks the ball. 
That'll bring on Quinn Sharp, the sophomore from Mansfield, Texas, to punt it away. Gets good protection. Comes off the right side, takes a cowboy bounce inside the 30, and is down there. No return possible for Washington State. We'll take a break with the Cowboys leading it early, 7 0. Oklahoma State with an early TD after a turnover by Washington State has a 7 0 lead here. Academy Sports and Outdoors presenting Big 12 College Football Saturday. The Cougs from the Pac 10 down 7 0 as Washington State. Comes back aboard with Jeff Tool and our principal financial edge to the game. Well, Jeff Tool, he's, he's bigger and stronger like we talked about in the open. Uh, listen, this kid played young, and so he's just going to continue to get better and better. But he's the guy that can really mean some victories for this club. Comes out to the far side and completes it near the first down marker as he goes to number 84. And that's Jared Karstetter. He is stopped by Andrew McGee. As Karstetter, junior out of Spokane, Washington, last year 38 receptions, 540 yards, and six touchdowns. Good play call right there. Just get get Tool out of the pocket, get him an easy completion, let him calm down. He is still a young guy. Let him calm down, get into the flow of the game. Tool, second and short, handoff up the middle, ran into his own guy, and Justin Gent, the senior linebacker from Irving, Texas, there to make the tackle on James Montgomery, a senior from Rancho Cordova, California. Turn on the film, Andre Lentz, number 87, is going to get a tackle on the play. He's the tight end for Washington <laughs> State. Turns around, Montgomery runs right into him. You can tell Montgomery's a good back. This Washington State team's just got to calm down, but the onus is on the offensive line. Create some holes, get this conversion on third and one. They look to Montgomery, swings it outside, has the first down, and uses that shoulder to power for another yard or two before he's bumped out of bounds. Montgomery, 167 yards rushing last year, had a serious leg injury that almost cost him his leg. Terrific story and a terrific run right there, lowering the shoulder. That will pay dividends later in this ball game. As you punish defenders as a running back, they are less likely to come up and try to put their heads down. And you can dictate the tempo of the game from the running back position just by taking on tacklers. First to 10 for the Cougars. Tripped up at the 45 yard line is the running back on the play as the tackle is made that time by Lemon. That's not a good sign there. Another no. injury possibly for the Washington State Cougars. Ricky Galvin running off of pain and being attended to quickly. They were decimated by injuries last year. Paul Wolf, the now third year head coach, said, I'd already decided to bite the bullet, that uh, to turn this thing around and build it the right way, as he puts it in his words, we're going to redshirt the bulk of our freshmen, but then. They were already thin, and they had an incredible amount of injuries, and now you get this in the first quarter of your season opener. And it looks pretty serious. We're going to take a brief timeout, and then we'll come right back and update you as soon as we can. You're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday, and it's brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. We'll come back with a game break right after this. John Radigan in the Fox Sports studios with an academy game break. Taylor Martinez gets the start as the quarterback for Nebraska and then takes advantage of it. A 46-yard touchdown run. Nebraska 14-0. Bill Land, that looks a lot like Joel Klatt used to run. Oh, wait. No, it doesn't. Fast. <laughs> Thank you, John. Yeah, by the way, last oh. night we were entertained by watching Joel Klatt get blown up on YouTube. But... <laughs> In a serious note here, this is just an absolute crying shame. Ricky Galvin, who's an outstanding recruit out of Berkeley, California, true freshman, comes in first carry. First Joel, carry of the game. After 2,264 rushing yards his senior year. And they were excited about this oh. kid, and as they should be. We're going to take a look just one time because it's it's clear and obvious. Just the his own weight. Uh, never want to see that. That's gruesome. Absolutely gruesome. I can tell you he's got a bright future and Washington State was excited about him. Heart goes out to that kid. Does everything right. Some publications had him as high as 18th nationally at his position as a recruit. 
Washington State was excited to get him, and uh, he'll have to work his way back into the lineup after getting healthy, Bill. Wow, what a blow. That's much more worse than any turnover that they had on their first possession. Now, a drop on a nice pass thrown that time, and it falls incomplete to Jeffrey Solomon. Solomon, who had 25 grabs a year ago, had some room to roam there if he can make the handle. And, and that's what a team like Washington State needs to avoid. Uh, you got the letdown of the turnover. You get the letdown of another injury, and we'll get into those details a little bit longer. But then there's a, a wide open slant pass in the middle of the football field. You got to make that catch because you got a first down there. You got to take advantage of your opportunities. Tool. The screen play here. Montgomery, Oklahoma State sniffing that out. And there is Justin Gent with the stopper. First career start for Jen reads the screen perfectly able to slip through the offensive line as they're out running the sidewalk trying to get those guys down trying to cut them down terrific tackle bodies him up because Montgomery is a slippery guy now he's fast he's explosive he can get some things done but you see the speed from this defense and that's what the coaches were raving about was the speed of the Cowboys on defense as evidence right there by Jen running down the screen pass fourth and eight means Forrest Reed comes on for the punt stands on his 32. And into the front row. Nice grab made by a Cowboy fan over there. OSU fans excited about this team. Quite sure what they've got. They know they got talent and speed and our principal financial edge to the game for the folks. Their quarterback, Brandon Whedon. He's my new favorite player in college football. What a guy shock. Right, right after my own heart, the baseball player, the old guy, he's got a great arm. He was a pitcher in the minor leagues. He's very accurate, even though he has that strong arm. And the maturity factor. This is the type of kid that can come out. He's going to have the respect of his team teammates anytime he speaks to them. And that's a valuable asset as a quarterback. Edmond Santa Fe High School down the Oklahoma City area. In trouble here. And is incomplete good pop there defensively and receiver unable to hold on for Oklahoma State Simone there had it in his grasp was able unable to kind of bring it all the way in no I'm sorry that was Joseph Randall the right, true Randall. freshman playing for Oklahoma State 193 pounds got to rein those in when in doubt Kendall Hunter she comes right up the middle there as Hunter picks up as Wachiku makes the tackle. And our Geico quote when we talked to Dana Holgerson, the offensive coordinator, coordinator's first year, we said, well, how many touches do you get for Hunter? 50 or 60 or more. <laughs> we want him to have the ball. And, yeah, he's kidding a little bit, Joel. A little bit. Yeah, that's right, because we've already seen them utilize Kendall Hunter quite a bit, and they're going to go back and fake it to him right here. And that sets up Whedon for an all-day opportunity. Incomplete on the sideline near OSU. A nice job defensively to, to keep that ball away. That was Wachiku coming up with it. Chima Wachiku is a senior from Allen, Texas. His brother playing down at Texas A&M. Good fake right there from Whedon. You get on the outside, does everything right at this point. He sets his feet and delivers a strike right there. That ball has got to be caught by Justin Horton. Here's what you got to resist as a quarterback is getting frustrated that your guys are dropping the football. You had Randall, a true freshman, drop a ball. Sophomore Horton drop the ball. Just go back and encourage them so they can get it the next time. And Whedon with that age of maturity ought to be able to handle that. Quinn Sharp with the punt and a dandy as they stay away from it in the Washington State slide. And it rolls inside the 15 down to the 12-yard line. And good pressure from Washington State right up the middle. They went after this punt. You're going to see him get into the wall. And right there, boy, that is absolutely close. And do a nice job right there avoiding Sharp. If he hits the turf, there's a possibility of a flag there, you know, not allowing him a place to land his feet. As it was, though, Sharp gets off a dandy, and Washington State, again, is going to be backed up in their own territory, having to start a drive. Tool, I tell you what, this guy is baptism by fire. He had to start at USC and Oregon a year ago. Here he is at Oklahoma State, down and inside his own red zone. That was Adam Corper who nearly got a touch on that punt. The punt goes for 61 yards, and then Montgomery runs into a wall of OSU tacklers led by Ori Lemon, the senior out of Houston. Last year, a red shirt because of a knee injury. He had 90 tackles as a junior in 08. Terrific penetration and recognition of 
the offensive play. Ori Lemon, they were excited to get this guy back on their defense. Was a senior a year ago, got hurt a couple of days before that Georgia game. Now he had the red shirt last year, but he's back for his senior year. Ori Lemon, heck of a player for the post. Out of Houston Yates High School. For Tool and company, looking into that sun and incomplete. And it'll now be third down and long. And Joel, you played here before. Not a fun time to play here going into the sun in this East-West Stadium. Well, it's, it's, it's one of the only stadiums I can tell you right now. This is what Jeff Toole is looking at, the sun right above this east side. Yes, they built it up, but the sun is still right there. And it's tough to see, especially when you're looking at white jerseys, Bill. When we went this direction and the east side wasn't even built yet, I can tell you that was one of the toughest things that we ever did as an offense is go right into that sun for a quarterback. And almost the goal line, incomplete, nearly picked off in the secondary that time, Johnny Thomas. I guarantee you the sun had something to do with that. You, you just don't follow through, nothing feels correct. Every field in college football goes north and south. And it's just for this reason, that sun, you see how it floats right there. Tool was just not able to get on top of that football. Looking directly in the sun, I'm telling you, that's very difficult to do. I had a couple of balls uh, float on me when we were going into that east side, uh, excuse me, the west side for Oklahoma State. Johnny Thomas, who's an outstanding receiver in high school as well as a defender. <laughs> we'll tell you later, he probably should have caught that ball, even though it would have been a nice catch. And the pickup is made at the 45-yard line and across midfield. That is Cooper with the return after the punt from Reed Forrest. And all things considered, a 46-yard punt in that situation is not too shabby. Let's send it down to Emily Jones. Guys, here's the latest on Oklahoma, um, rather Washington State running back Ricky Galvin. Uh, the team trainer told me that he does have a fractured forearm, but unbelievably as gruesome as the video was, there are some good signs. He said he's been splinted, taken to the locker room for x-rays. We'll let you know if there's anything further. All right, thank you, Emily, and best wishes to that young man. Uh, boy, it did look ugly. Don't want to see that for a true freshman, guy, especially a guy as talented as Galvin was coming in with 2,200 yards in his senior year of high school. Flag thrown against the Cowboys here, and at Washington State, four possessions, oh, 17 yards. Number 73 of the offense. Five yard penalty, first down. They haven't had an opportunity to get themselves settled. Yeah. Just to yeah. get their feet wet and get that offensive line. A lot of new faces up there for the offensive line of Washington State. Not able to get settled, but. You know, to their credit, they've been going out there on defense and at least keeping Oklahoma State out of the end zone with the exception of that first drive. First and 15, and this one a completion right across the middle that time, and rolling along is Bo Bowling. Rather, uh, Good route right here. When you get man coverage, you've got to run across the field. Bowling recognizes it perfectly. He has a man trailing him. He keeps on going. Don't stop in the zone. Good pass delivered there by Whedon for a first down. Kendall Hunter breaks a tackle, 35, tripped up, or he nearly goes to the house. And the Cowboys again get great field position, now taking advantage of it, first and 10, just inside the 30. Is it just me? I've watched this guy for three years. This is absolutely the best that he has looked. Physically, he looks absolutely cut like he did all the work he needed to do in the offseason. Now the tempo for uh, for the Cowboys weeding right back at the line of scrimmage. After that 23 yard pickup, he leans forward to try to avoid a loss here. And an ankle tackle may brings him down to the 31, a loss on the play. Myron Beck, a nice job of wrapping up there. You better wrap up. And Absolutely. And terrific job of recognition from Myron Beck. Sees the screen pass just like Gent a, a series ago for Oklahoma State. Sees the screen pass, comes up, wraps up, because you've got to wrap up against Kendall Hunter. Hunter, the uh, injury last year that sidelined him for a good part of the season at 382 yards rushing after an All-American year the year before. Big pop that time made on number one, Joseph Randall. And again, Myron Breck coming up from his linebacker spot. I got quick piece of advice for Dana Holgerson. Don't run a screen at Myron Beck because that <laughs> guy is flying up and absolutely crunching some pads. Recognition again, you see him. Offensive linemen unable to get out and get those linebackers. That's why you need speed and athleticism on the outside as we take a look at another Washington State Cougar down on the field. A couple of them flew in there, and, and there was definitely some collisions, but. It's personal foul. 
pace fence. Number 24, the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. It is first down. So while they tend to the injured player for the Cougars, and Kafusi. Yeah, I believe Kafusi was coming in. Yeah, he was the, the player in the back there, and I think he just got the brunt of that impact. Everything coming back into him right into his forehead. Well, look, Sokope Kafusi looks like he's trying to say, I'm all right. Yeah. Better find out if he knows what state he's in, first of all. Cowboys hand it off here after the penalty. And plowing forward again is Kendall Hunter, senior out of Tyler, Texas. 1,555 yards to lead the Big 12 in 08. Seventh nationally in 119 a game. They say this guy can run under 4-4 in the 40-yard dash. He's also quick. He can make you miss in a phone booth. I like the formation here. Three backs in the backfield giving it to Kendall Hunter again. And Hunter takes it right to the end zone. Another touchdown, Kendall Hunter and Oklahoma State. What an impressive start. Great execution there. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Dana Holgerson giving the football again to Kendall Hunter out of that set. I like that set right there. The two backs in the backfield able to go up and isolate on those linebackers. And then Hunter is just able to get skinny, keep his feet, get the ball into the end zone. Good notes for the end zone from Kendall Hunter. So Hunter sets it up for Dan Bailey, the senior from Mustang, Oklahoma. And Bailey, who was 46 of 46 a year ago, two of two after this. Power. Brandon Whedon's got to be happy about just turning, giving the ball to Kendall Hunter right there. Well, he's got seven carries for 69 yards and two touchdowns, and we've got 5.43 to go in the first well, quarter. And, and you got to credit that offensive line. This is not an offensive line with a lot of experience, but Nick Martinez making his first start. Grant Gardner making his first start. Uh, Levi Adcock making his first start. A lot of guys up there making their first start, yet they're doing a heck of a job creating holes, allowing Kendall Hunter to make positive yardage, get the ball into the end zone. And Hunter with two receptions, nine touches so far. The Hunter watch just is under on. six minutes to go in the first <laughs> quarter, so maybe Dana wasn't kidding us, and uh, Mike Gundy backed that up and said, hey, that's the guy that we want to get it to, and just, you see a guy like Galvin go down, you can understand Washington State fans, how excited Oklahoma State fans are to see their Star running back return it. obviously very healthy after a tough year a year ago. And the kickoff in the end zone again. Washington State will down it right there and bring it back out as State receiving for the Cougars. And let's send it down to Emily Jones. Well, guys, you know Kendall Hunter missed most of last season with that injury, but in 2008 he was first team All-American, 1,555 yards, 16 touchdowns for Kendall. Dana Holgerson says he is so powerful. Seen way many people bounce off of him uh, than the other way around. Also, too, said he can't get him to say two words, but Mike Gundy says the smile pretty much says it all. Definitely lots of smiles on the Oklahoma State bench here in the first quarter. Thanks, Emily. Yeah, he... Uh, Quiet young man that makes his noise while carrying a football. Tool loops it, and Montgomery shoulders. Talk about earning a yard. <laughs> He's doing it wow. right there. Here's the problem. Washington State, fumble, punt, punt, punt. And the Cowboys have taken advantage with two touchdowns. Yeah, and you hate to see that if you're a Washington State fan. It's more of the same, 240 yards, eight yards total a year ago per game that was 119 in FBS this is a team that needs some positive momentum right here they have got to get something going on this drive tool delivers here as it's complete to Karstetter Karstetter gets another grab and making the stop is Justin Gilbert the cornerback I love that type of play you know you, you just gained one yard you're in a second and long situation what do you do don't panic and go for the first down right away just get yourself into a manageable third down situation you call the out route you got the single safety the corner has deep responsibility it's a pitch and catch it's an easy throw and tool executed perfectly so now it is third and two for Washington State let's see what they come up with Tool. Got time, delivers, Karstetter lost the football, ruled incomplete. Boy, was he hammered. 
This Oklahoma State defense is exactly as advertised. Inexperienced, young, and fast. They are flying around. Ori Lemon, terrific read. Eyes all over the quarterback's eyes, and just a missile on the outside. Karstetter unable to hold that ball for the first down, and you know why they missed Ori Lemon so much a year ago. The plays he's already made in this football game tell you that he's a sensational linebacker. You talked about McDouble in one of those sponsorship reads. That was a McDouble, a sandwich Ooh. they made of him. Five possessions, 36 yards, and Reed Forrest punts it away again. Pokes on the return, and Gilbert bringing it back, and he is brought down on the play. I guess practice as makes the tackle. Practice makes perfect. This team punts way too much, as in Washington State averaged almost seven punts a game, Bill, a year ago. And then it shows that's their best unit so far yeah. in this football game. I mean, special teams are vital, obviously, in this case, as a 47 yard kick. And the other thing is, it even though it looks pretty grim right now for the Cougars, considering how little they've done offensively, it could be much worse. It absolutely could be much worse because Oklahoma State has not been in a great rhythm on offense with the exception of Kendall Hunter. Yeah, the, the adjustment to the new air raid offense, Dan Holgerson, is going to take a while. And trying to get it going here, the completion made on the play to Justin Blackman, and he is tackled by Wachiku. Blackman, a sophomore from Ardmore, Oklahoma, Here's the quick tempo. Pokes already at the line. And there's Hunter. Nice little fake that time by Brandon Whedon. And it bought Hunter just enough to go right up the middle for a pretty good little game. First and 10 line. Brought to you by Phillips Televisions as the Pokes have a second and five facing them right now. Kendall Hunter, 40. 45 got the first down, moved the chains as the Cowboys riding Kendall Hunter here in this first quarter with 402 remaining. Toomer leading the way to make the tackle. Terrific block on the outside. Nick Martinez holding his own right there, getting his man locked up, allowing Kendall Hunter, Kendall Hunter to find the edge. Terrific job by the big fellas in the a fast, high tempo offense. Weed escapes one defender. And he finds an open receiver. It's Josh Cooper across midfield at the Cougs 47 yard line as Cooper makes the reception. Great athleticism from the old guy. You see us old guys, we can still run a little bit in college football, but a nice job getting out of the pocket, but also staying balanced so you can deliver the ball with accuracy and velocity down the football field. Now you got an easy second and short situation. You've got everything at your disposal. Do not be shocked if they fake this football and go deep. This is the perfect time for it. Whedon, five of eight for 24 yards in his first start as a college quarterback. Hands it off here, and they have more than enough for the first down as once again, they continue to go on the ground, and this time they give it up to Jeremy Smith. Now, Smith is an interesting story. Redshirt freshman from Tulsa. They intended to redshirt him last year. Yeah. Hunter gets banged up. They bring him out. He gets 160 against Grambling, and then he gets hurt again, so they were able to finally redshirt. Blocked as Whedon almost had to catch his own. Whedon missed his guy right here. This is, this is a quarterback getting greedy. He's got a guy completely wide open. Just give the football right there. This is where you don't need to be greedy. Just take your third and five, take your third and four. Maybe you're even gonna get more than that if your wide receiver can get himself loose and get a first down, but don't go broke taking a profit because now you're in a second along situation. Here goes Wolfram who got the blocked pass attempt. So Hunter comes right back on for the Cowboys as just one moment for a breather. Smith gets a carry, block pass, and Kendall Hunter goes back to work as Darren Markle makes the stop for the Cougs, and again, quick tempo. Hunter again slices his way to the 30-yard line on a third and short. And that ought to move the chains again, and it does. We talked with Bill Young, the defensive coordinator for Oklahoma State, and he said that the tempo that his offense plays with is absolutely astounding. They can run so many plays, and this is evidence on this drive. Guys in and out substituting, and yet right at the line of scrimmage, able to snap the football within 15 seconds of the last play. Hunter, 94 yards already. Incomplete, intended for Cooper. 
Bad recognition on the outside by Justin Blackman. That's a zone defense right there. Number 81 on the outside. He He's going to just sit right there. You see him sitting. Uh, couldn't quite get to it, but I, he, there was a pocket right there that Blackman could just sit there. He can catch the short pass. It's easy completion, just like they executed it right there on this floor. Pick up the four or five and go from there. This was a second down throw. And there's Dana Holgerson, the new offensive coordinator here for Oklahoma State. Two years at Houston, led the nation last year in total offense with the Cougs, and of course, five years at Texas Tech as the OC under Mike Leach. And you all know about their record setting numbers. So he brings a different look here to Oklahoma State that has basically been based on balance over the years. But when the offense really struggled last year late against Oklahoma and in the Cotton Bowl against Ole Miss, and Mike Gundy doing all the play calling, Mike took a step back and said, hey, I need to bring someone else in to run that. We're going to change things up a little bit. Gives him a chance to be a little bit more of a pure head coach in the traditional map. Well, I can tell you this also. It, it's no surprise to me that the guy that they brought in actually had a terrific day as an offensive coordinator right on this field a year ago. The Houston offensive coordinator Dana, Hol Dana Holgerson at the time brings in Keenum with the high-flying Houston Cougars, and they beat a highly ranked, uh, you know, a lot of expectations on Oklahoma State last year. They come in and they beat the Cowboys early in the year, and then late they struggled with that balanced offense, so no surprise that Dana Holgerson gets the call from the Cowboys, and he accepts because this is a great place to be a coach with the facilities that they have. No question about that. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the first week of college football Saturday. How about next time around? Georgia Tech in Kansas, Colorado and Cal, Wyoming and number four, Texas, Virginia, USC. An unbelievable lineup from coast to coast. The action kicks off at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, college football Saturday. Oklahoma State, third down and five now. 127 yards of total offense to 18 for the Cougars of Washington State. Brandon Wheat ready to pitch and catch again. It is complete, and I don't think he got the first down on the play, though. Trying to stretch for it was Justin Blackman. Ledgerwood made the stop for Washington State. Justin Clayton, the redshirt freshman for Washington State right there, he runs in, he was unblocked, and because he was unblocked, he thought it was a screen. He's already seen about three <laughs> or four screen passes. He just stopped right in front of Whedon. That's one of those things where you just look at him in the eye as a quarterback, you think to yourself, I'm either going to take one in the mouth or he's going to stop and be confused. Luckily for Whedon, he was stopped and very confused. 40-yard field goal attempt for Dan Bailey. It was 13 of 18 last year, and it is good. Bailey tacks on a three-spot. And the Cowboys, after the drive stalls, pick up three, and Oklahoma State with a 17 to nothing lead over the Pac-10 Washington State Cougars. We have 110 remaining in the first quarter. Mike Gundy's got to be pleased. Got to be he's pleased. Overall. And, and he told us he was nervous for this. One, Bill, he's had a lot of experienced players graduate. However, one of them was not Kendall Hunter. This guy comes back with experience, and he's been sensational thus far today on the first series after the turnover from Washington State. First carry of the year, takes it all the way inside the five, and then the power gets behind his pads, nose for the end zone. You see this guy and how physical he is running the football. A lot of people know him as, as just a speedster and a water bug, makes you miss in a phone booth. But now he's 200 pounds. You can see he's rocked himself up a little bit. He's physical. He's running very physical, hard to bring him to the ground. I expect big things from 24, Kendall Hunter, over the course of this. And you know what? He's done it before. All-American yep. in 2008, so you know it's in him. Here's the kickoff, and the Cougs will bring it out this time as Staden to the 15. Flags floating everywhere. And he's brought down near the 19-yard line. Chance Staden, Charlie Moore making the tackle. And multiple flags. First quarter winding down. We haven't had too many penalties so far. During the return, holding number 35 of the return team. Half the distance, first down. More problems for the Cougars. Our Honda game summary. Take a look as the Cougars fumbling on the opening play from scrimmage. Hunter has, Hunter, I should say, has dominated and has OSU in total yards. And look at that last one. 
Cougars, five possessions, one turnover, four punts. Not good for the Cougars. Very good for Kendall Hunter. He's eight yards away from his 12th hundred yard day of his career. We're still in the first quarter. <laughs> Hand off here, and State comes outside, tries to stiff arm the defender. Knocked out of bounds that time by McGee. Chance Staten, a senior from Campbell, California. 5'10", 205. Good blocking up front right here from the Cougars. This is exactly what they need, and they pinned Ori Lemon in the middle of that defense. He's been flowing over the top very effectively thus far in this defense, or so far in this game. Chance Staten gets to the outside. He's their quick guy, a third down type of back. And this is, you're going to read this with a lot of Washington State Cougars. Uh, an 08 leading rusher missed last season with a knee injury. They've been decimated by injuries as we look at the uh, Cowboy player who's on the ground. I think it's Jarka, yeah, that yep, is down. Jarka is down. Shane Jarka, the senior from Sugarland, Texas, says OSU checking out that knee. And Jarka, part of that defensive unit that when you talk to Bill Lo Bill Young and you ask him, is there something that keeps you up awake at night? And he goes, just worry about health. He said, we're yeah. a little bit thin. And he said, we've got to keep our guys healthy, especially until some of these younger players who they think are very talented can finally get their feet under them and get a little bit of experience. Well, you, you know, you just look at the defensive tackle position, which Jarka plays and backing up. The two seniors, Donaldson and Jarka, are a sophomore and a true freshman. You got David L. Collins, number 98. Uh, he's 268 pounds, but he's a true freshman. You got a sophomore, Nigel Nicholas, number 89. He's 277, but he's just a sophomore. You know, so Bill Young, and you can tell it's, it's weighing on him right there. Last season, 18 tackles, five for a loss, one and a half sacks for Shane Jarka. So today is, is, is his first start, but like Bill Young said, I've got a lot of guys that haven't started but all of them have played. When you see there what Bill Young, the DC here is facing with, uh, look at that, 471 career starts gone and what returns, but he is certainly half cup full because he really likes his players. I can see why. I mean, yeah. you see the athleticism so far in this game. You see the speed, especially at the linebacker position, and this is perfectly built. If you're Bill Young, you've got to like what you see because this is for Big 12 play, that spread offense that you almost see every single week. You need guys that can play in space. These linebackers can do that. They can get out there, they can cover anybody, and they're tough enough to sit in the middle and stop the run. First and 10 at the 33 for two. Sees the pressure. Oklahoma State checks out of it. And it is complete at the 41 yard line. Caught by Wilson. They're really excited about Marquise Wilson, this freshman from Tulare, California. Yep. He's an outstanding athlete. Terrific check right here. Thought that they were going to blitz from the wide side of the field. So, Tool, Tool checks to just a hitch on the outside. That's a very good hitch very manageable play. Wilson does a nice job giving Tool his numbers, goes down, gets the football. Now you're in, again, a manageable situation. Look at this run as Washington State. Finally, some offensive success, and Chance Staden rips it down to the 43, maybe the 44, I guess, of Oklahoma State University. This is what you have to battle, Bill. If you're a defensive coordinator, you have some success early with an inexperienced group is they let up. They don't play hard for the entire game. That's what we're seeing right now from Oklahoma State. Washington State taking advantage. 15-yard pickup. That's the end of the first quarter with Oklahoma State leading 17-0. You're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. 17-0 Oklahoma State, a commanding first quarter performance by the Cowboys of Mike Gundy as they jump on the Cougars of Washington State on the first play from scrimmage, recovering a fumble and then scoring two plays later and have carried on since then. And Washington State getting some momentum on this drive, though. Stayed in a couple carries, 38 yards. And it's given them a little bit of hope offensively as we start the second quarter. Tool with a fake and the keeper. And he lunges forward down near the 41-yard line, picks up a couple, the tackle by Ori Lemon. Waiting to see that as uh, another Cowboy is shaking up there on the field. The Cowboys, it's the this other, time it's Chris Donaldson. Yeah, that's, that's the other defensive tackle. We oh. saw Jarka down, leave the football field. 
couple of plays ago. This is the other defensive tackle, also making his first career start, number 95, 296 pounds senior Chris Donaldson. And Bill Young pacing the sidelines with head coach Mike Gundy and said, all right, well, next. Well, coaches will tell you that in order to have good football teams for the entire year, you got to have some luck. You got to stay healthy. Both of these coaches want to get out of this game healthy. Thus far, thus far, they haven't been able to do it. 17-0, Oklahoma State. Donaldson and Jarka, 95-46 respectively there. The two injured defensive tackles for Oklahoma State. It's certainly a concern. They brought on Anthony Rogers now as we resume play. And it is second down and seven for the Cougars of Washington State. 14.42 to go, first half here at Boone Pickens Stadium in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Cowboys up 17-0. The Cougars trying to make a little hay offensively. Jeff Toole, sophomore quarterback, scrambling and crushed at the 45-yard line as the Cowboy defense rallies. Bill Young is second year as a defensive coordinator here. Last year, they brought him up to number 31 in total defense nationally. He likes this bunch, too. Well, we are excited about him. We've got a bunch of guys that played quite a bit last year, and maybe they weren't starters, but they, it, it's not going to be the first time they step on the field. We're running pretty much the same system they ran before, and we have all the other coaches who've been coaching that system all you know the other the other year. So uh, there's a lot of continuity there, and I really think that uh, our players understand what we want and, and how we want it done, and I think that'll carry right onto the field. It has so far, and again this time Tool nearly had it stripped. Now he's running for his life to the 45 to 40. And escapes out of bounds. Nice, nice athleticism that time by Tool, where it could have been much worse. He ends up going to the 39 yard line. Chanasa in chase. Good coverage down the football field. Nowhere to go with the football. Good balance in the pocket, getting himself out there. Now you got to look. It's third down. You don't necessarily want to run it until they force you to. Chinasa, Chinasa definitely forced him out of the pocket and down the football field. Good play there by Oklahoma State. Good coverage on the outside by that defensive backcourt. So they're going to try a 56-yard field goal attempt. Nico Grasso. Last year he was six of ten, as long as 44. He was booming him yesterday in practice. This one is good. How about that? What a kick. Grasso, 56 yards, and it's good. The Cougars, something to claw about. Big 12 College Football Saturday is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Academy Sports and Outdoors, the right stuff, low price every day. And by Steel Outdoor Power Equipment. For dependable chainsaws and lightweight blowers, visit steeldealers.com. Some of the Cougar fans made the long trip from the great Northwest down here. A little bit more encouraged. The shutout is over, and a 56-yard field goal by Nico Grasso, and he will now kick it off here for Washington State on the board, trailing by two touchdowns, 17 to three. But the encouraging thing was they did move the football on that they drive. They did, and the offensive line uh, opened up some holes for the running back. So now they've got something to build on as they go back. They start drawing on the whiteboard on the uh, on the sidelines. Now they get tangible, something tangible to hold on to, tangible success for this team. But the defense has got to go out there and do what they've been doing. I know that Oklahoma State has 17 points, but most of that has been Kendall Hunter. Go out there if you're Washington State. Get this football right back for your offense because they at least have some rhythm. And Drew Brandon Wheaton, get a couple of first downs. Keep your defense off the field. So the Cowboys come back out, and I think that was Hunter back on the kick yeah. also. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> we were talking about those touches. Uh, there's a lot of ways to get them. this guy the football. Brandon Wheaton makes to Hunter. Drills across the middle. Football is dropped. It'll be second and 10 
Intended for Tracy Moore, the sophomore from Tulsa. Covered that time by Tyree Toomer. Several drops already in this game. We heard, saw Randall drop one. He was a true freshman. We saw him, seen Horton drop one. He's a sophomore. Uh, another drop there by Tracy Moore. He's a, the young guys now. They got to step up for the Cowboys. Whedon got rid of it and a big pop as the Cowboys fortunate to hang on to the football that time. Big hit that time as Kafusi comes through. Good recognition there from Halston Higgins as well. The senior, the linebacker, gets out there in front of the big offensive lineman, Grant Gardner, able to stop that screen before it starts. Hunter, very just fortunate to end up still with the football. Whedon, they come after him, and the blitz pays off. Whedon is sacked inside his five-yard line as Alex Hoffman Ellis with the tackle and that WSU contingent excited now. Boy, he closed in a hurry. Whedon had all the time in the world. You see Hoffman Ellis, the late, what we call a green dog blitz, late through that B gap. He's sitting, he's sitting, he's sitting. Now he goes and turn on the Jets, gets to Whedon late. Can't hold the football that long when you're backed up near your own end zone. Bad things usually happen. Hoffman Ellis, terrific execution of the blitz. Boy, great cam work, brought it right into your living room. And kicking out of the end zone now is Quinn Sharp. Sharp, who averaged 45 plus last year. And backing up is Staden and calls the fair catch, and it'll be at midfield for Washington State. Timeout is called. A little momentum going to the Cougars' side. Stay with us on Big 12 College Football Saturday. Welcome back to Stillwater, Oklahoma. Oklahoma State on top of Washington State, 17 to three. I am among some of the best Cowboys fans in Boone Pickens Stadium right now. And McDonald's is looking for the fan of the season. Send your video to fanofthesseason.com to win $10,000 toward a fan cave and other great prizes. Hit the website and enter today. Guys, take it away. Why don't you find out the average GPA of those guys down there in the front row. I, you know, I, I have no idea. <laughs> I, I don't even want to speculate. Who cares? Washington State going for broke. A flag dropped back now the 45 yard line. <laughs> Ten receivers, Isaiah Barton. Juco transfer, they're expecting big things there. Yep, up at the top, Holy. just a straight go route. 55 of the offense. 10 yard penalty, second down. Holding in the backfield, that's a, that's a ball if you're tool you want back because you had your guy open down the middle of the football field. Isaiah Barton, good route right there. Get on the toes of the defender and just beat him deep. Your job as a quarterback is put enough air under that pass for your wide receiver to run under it. Tool was unable to do that. A little bit too flat of trajectory right there. Two of five of 10, 24 yards so far tonight. Pushes him back though, first and 20 now for the Cougars. 17 to 3. Tool, good protection so far. Now scrambles and keeps. Shows a little foot speed as he dives across the 50. Should have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Oh, it's up 10. That, that's great game management right there. For, you, know, you could call it athleticism, sure, but this is good, great game management. First and 20. You get back there. You don't see anything. You don't go broke taking a profit. Tuck the ball down and get half of it back. Now you're in a second and ten situation rather than just launching it and either throwing an in interception or incompletion and it being second and 20. Sophomore from Fresno, California last year threw for 789 yards, 16 ease, five picks. Hands off here to Chance Staden. And Staden gets a couple. He didn't join us early. We had the injury to the outstanding freshman of the Cougars, Ricky Galford. We haven't seen as much of James Montgomery here in the second quarter who started the ball game, but Staten has given him a little bit of a lift. Well, and th this defensive line right now has been decimated by a couple of injuries so far in this game. Jarka and Donaldson, the two starting defensive tackles, are out right now for Oklahoma State. That's why you're seeing some of those holes open up for Washington State, but this is a key conversion down for them, third and eight. If they test that OSU defensive group now. And it is complete at the 25, the 20, and touchdown, Wilson. Cougars get their first TD of the season. He kept showing up in the preseason. 
Wilson impressed everybody with his athleticism, his consistent ability to catch the football, finds the hole in the zone, and Tool with a sensational throw on third and eight. We said it was an important conversion down. Not only did they convert, they put it in the end zone. What a terrific throw. Tool scans right, comes back, finds his second secondary receiver, and then Wilson, look how he goes up and catches the ball with his hands. That's a terrific play right there from the true freshman, 173 pounds. Impressive play from the Cougars. Marquise Wilson, who last year is a high schooler, 22 touchdown receptions, over 1,000 yards at Tulare Union High School in California. Illegal substitution on the defense. Penalties declined. And that's a... You see that happen a lot. You see the confusion between the corner and the safety. You, you find that pocket, that hole in the cover two secondary, and a lot of times you'll see that, that confusion, especially when the quarterback starts out with his eyes on the other side of the defense. And the Cougars back-to-back -back scores now and back in the football game. It's 17-10 to 10 with 10-12 10, to go in the first half. Wilson on the board. All season long, Champion Apparel will be showcasing the history and traditions of the Big 12 Conference. Today, we highlighted Oklahoma State. Champion, it's how you play. Marquise Wilson, like the way he plays. I absolutely love it. And I love the eyes of the quarterback tool right there. Stop it, fellas. You see, right in this section here, the big hole in the cover two defense. As his eyes flow back left, he sees the hole and delivers the strike. If that ball has any more air on it or any less air on it, that ball is not complete. That is the perfect pass for that situation. And Wilson able to go up, catch it with his hands, and get it into the end zone. Those are two young guys that a lot of Cougars fans are excited to watch play for the next couple of years. Hunter returns here, looking for a break. Kept his balance and goes forward across the 25 to the 27 or 28-yard line. So after that 48-yard pitch and catch, Paul Wolf sees his ball club. Look at this quarter, 65 to minus 15 in the total yards game. As Paul Wolf, he said he loves the way that this team yep. is changing the culture. Their well, enthusiasm. It, it, think about the culture. I mean, last year, their average deficit at halftime in Pac-10 play was 25 to 3. It's 17-0. They've got an easy opportunity to give up, throw in the towel. What have they done? Battled back, played great football thus far in the second quarter. Now let's see what the Pokes can do that their lead has been trimmed to seven. Brandon Whedon hasn't thrown much tonight. Finds an opening here, though, and complete to bowling out near the 48-yard line. And Simmons makes the tackle on Bo Bowling. 18-yard pickup, Bowling, a senior from Tonkaro, Oklahoma. Yeah, let's see how this young offense responds. Quarterback, nice footwork in the pocket. Good balance right there. Strong arm. You see in that strong arm. But here's the set that they've had a lot of success with early in the game. The three running backs when they're just giving it to Kendall Hunter and allowing him to set the tempo for this game. So the first to ten. We put toss outside is complete to Colton Shelf. I Junior like, from Enid, Oklahoma. I like that play call. What have they done every single time? They've got three ba uh, ba uh, running backs in the backfield. They run the football. Come out, nice play action, get a pass on the outside. First to ten line brought to you by Phillips Televisions as OSU runs it here. And Hunter dives forward down to the 42-yard line for Kendall Hunter, brought down by Kafusi. Moves the chains again for OSU. As a quarterback, sometimes the your favorite formations become your most successful running formations because you know you're going to be able to throw the football out of that. First to ten, they fake to Hunter. Going deep here. Complete touchdown, Cowboys! Blackman with a score. How about that for an answer? 42 yards. Again, great execution. What I just say, your running formations are your favorite passing formations as a quarterback. Brandon Whedon, terrific football down the football field. High on the outside shoulder. Get that ball over the defender. Drop it down. We call it dropping in the basket as quarterbacks. That was an absolutely sensational throw. Bailey's point after is good. Oklahoma State quickly responds to the first touchdown of Washington State as Whedon with his first TD pass 
of the season and a beauty. Football is all about formations. You see everybody at the line of scrimmage right here for Washington State. Everybody, they got the matchup on the outside one-on-one -on -one. roll of boys. You got the one-on-one -on -one side, one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and Brandon Whedon with a terrific football. Throws it from the 50. What a strong arm all the way to the goal line on the outside. Accurate. A perfect pass right there. You got to throw with balance. Steps under himself. Look at the nice arc. The tip of the ball comes down beautifully on the outside shoulder. That is picture perfect right there. They're going to enjoy watching that one on the film when they turn it on tomorrow. Justin Blackman, who had a pair of touchdowns last year, gets this one here. And the Cowboys quickly jack it to 24 to 10. As you look at Whedon's numbers so far here, with 9 10 to go in the second quarter. That's the maturity right there. He's who does he go up to? He doesn't go up to his receiver. Yeah, yeah, Blackman, nice catch. He goes up. Hey, big fellas up front, way to protect me. That a baby. A lot of slaps on the butt right there. That's, that's right. a that's a mature, intelligent fella taking the snaps for the Cowboys. Staden downs it in the end zone. We'll bring it out, and we had a chance to visit with Brandon Whedon, the 26-year-old quarterback, and asked him about the personality of this offensive bunch. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously we're young, but uh, I think they're just, just relentless. You know, they just want to go out and prove people wrong and, and, uh, and, and have fun doing it, you know, because a lot of, lot of, we're not getting a lot of credit, which is, which is fine. You know, we, we'd rather be that way, and, you know, it, it's, it's our job to go out and, and, and prove those people wrong. Talking about proving wrong, the prognosticators saying this is the fifth best team in the Big 12 South this year, and that has given these players a little bit of a chip on their shoulder after going six and two a year ago in the league. Well, as it should. Nine win seasons back to back. I mean, this team is a very good football team. They've been ranked in the top. Uh, they've been ranked since September of 08. They beat Troy a couple of years ago on September 27th, 55-24. They've been ranked ever since until tonight's ball game. Yes, they're young. Yes, they're inexperienced. But they've enjoyed a heck of a lot of success under Mike Gundy the last couple of years. In fact, they've had nine win seasons back to back. The last time they had nine win seasons back to back, our big fella Pat Jones was coaching them with Thurman Thomas and Barry Sanders in 87 and 88 in, in two 10 win seasons. So the rarefied air for this group of Cowboys right now, and they're playing well. Tool completes this one, and Barton making the reception near the 25 yard line. And of course, uh, Pat Jones, when he was coaching, he had Mike Gundy as his quarterback. Yes, he did. Pretty good group of triplets with uh, Barry Sanders. He, he always says, how smart could I really be when all we did was give it to Thurman, let Mike throw it, and then give it to Barry. Yeah, there's a lot to that, but someone had to get those guys to come in here to Stillwater and, and, and play for him. Pat did a heck of a job back in those years. Both of those years, they finished 11th in the country. Outstanding. Third and five. Tool delivers again and wide open this time and strolling out to the 44 yard line is Barton. Tackle made by Markel Martin, a junior from Wichita Falls out of Ryder High School down here in Texas. A pickup of 18. I love what we're seeing from two inexperienced football teams. They're answering each other right now. This is a nice prize fight. One guy gets a shot in. What happens? You come out the next round, you throw a nice right hook yourself. Tool. A lot of maturity so far in this first half in his uh, second year as a college quarterback. And here's Montgomery. And after a little breather on the bench and stayed in spelling him, Montgomery comes up with maybe his best run of the night. Martin making the tackle here. Washington State is just seemingly now, all right, now we can play the game. That first quarter was like, wait a minute, it was like yeah. just too high speed. Too well, many things happen. Especially after that first series when they got a turnover, you see the explosiveness of Montgomery there, but this offensive line now providing some holes. Steve Morton, the offensive line coach, he's got to be thrilled right now with what he's seeing from his bunch. Pick up a 15, they come right back to Montgomery here on a first and 10, and he has stopped at the 37 yard line, tackled by Justin Jen. Up front, they got a couple of junior college kids, 79 Gonzalez, 55 Jacobson on the left side. They like two all league performers in their junior college leagues. Uh, a couple of other guys that have some time up front, but again, Steve Morton, he said, this is gonna be a better group than we had a year ago. Incomplete this time, and another big hit, and an injured player is that is Byers, I believe, Jared Byers, a sophomore from Pullman, Washington. They already lost Galvin. 
There has been some serious, ooh, serious hits so far. That was with that this, helmet. Yeah, this football game. Hyper extends his leg right there. The, the speed and athleticism that we've seen thus far in this football game is, is really outstanding. I mean, the, the defenses have been flying around. Let's hope Jared Byers is, is going to be okay. And that this injury is not as, as bad as that video just showed them. Paul Wolf, third year head coach, former Cougar lineman himself, looking on with concern, obviously. We'll take a brief break. It's 24 10, Cowboys. Welcome back to Stillwater, Oklahoma. Well, the uh, struggles of the Washington State offensive line last season have been well documented. And so, in response, Paul Wolf bought in his old O line coach, Steve Morton. He uh, played for him in his playing days back at Washington State when he was a center and uh, has quickly turned this thing around, or at least it looks like it has uh, is headed in that direction. Paul Wolf said he's not, not used to not worrying about a position like that, but he says he has no worries because he has all the confidence and all the faith in Steve Morton. So uh, things looking good early on here for this Washington State offense. Now they pick things up. Thank you. And tool this time has to scramble. Takes it near the 37. The tackle was made by Gent. You saw Byers being taken off the uh, fullback with the injury. This one again, or or a lemon. You see the relentless blitz right up the middle. That's going to move your feet. That's going to take you off of your spot as a quarterback. Tool has to kind of escape up the pocket go to his left on the third down you want to try to convert that but at the same time you don't want to take a sack especially when your kicker Nico Grasso has already made one from 56 now he's out there from 54. And we'll see how he handles it here. How about a fake the pitch and it goes to Grasso did he get the first down he dives out of bounds on the fake field goal I don't think he made it though. Oklahoma State, yeah, coming off. It's going to be Cowboy football as he got out too soon. Jones was chasing on the play. This is what you don't want to see. Good execution right here. You take the pitch man right at, right at the kind of the quarterback player, but Grasso forced out of bounds right there. Didn't necessarily get that ball out there in front. His foot goes out of bounds right there. Yeah, he's about a yard short. That's a very good spot by the official good camera work fellas right there. Boy that's a that's that's a chance you take when you put the football in the hands of your kicker to try yeah. to make an athletic play down the football field. Force made a nice pitch. They pulled off the fake but here come the Cowboys with Kendall Hunter 40 30 Hunter riding it. Will he score inside the 10 yard line. Oh mama what a play by Hunter. Terrific blocking down the football field. You gotta love that if you're Kendall Hunter all the way down the football field getting an escort. Keep him in the football game. Let him punch it in. He earned it. He got it all the way down there. Keep it. Give it to Hunter. Hunter after the long run. Oh, he's tired. Yeah. <laughs> Cowboys singly touchdown. Nothing from the officials yet. Slow on the whistle, but finally denied. After a 66 yard run, look at his total now. That put him over the 100. What a way to break the century mark. <laughs> Second and goal. Not yet this time. Good they defense right up front. here. Jeremy Smith is denied. This is when you got to bow your neck. You give up a big play as a defense. You know how you stay in this ball game? You don't allow them to get into the uh, yeah. into the end zone. You hold them to a field goal here, and now you still got a chance. You see good penetration from the Washington State defense. That's what it takes. And now they're back with the three backs in the backfield. And this time we jump ball. Blackman. Touchdown, Cowboys. He was the only guy who was going to get that. What a pass. What a sensational pass from Brandon Whedon. One on one coverage on the top. Blackman clearly has the athletic advantage and a terrific pass. One step, give it up there. We call it high in the box. He's the only guy that's going to catch that pass. Blackman, 81, goes up, grabs his strong hands. Get your foot in the end zone, fella. That's a touchdown for the Cowboys. 
One yard TD pass and then Bailey on for the point after it is good as well. And it's 31 to 10. Oklahoma State has quickly responded after a field goal and touchdown for Washington State early in the second quarter. Cowboys taking control again. As we take another look, you're going to see Whedon follow all the way through. His hand gets all the way into that opposite pocket. That allows the football to turn over, Bill. And that's what allows Blackman to go up there and have such an easy catch. That's an easy ball to catch. What a sensational pass from Whedon right there. Never far from the game during his baseball days. He would go back, coach his little brother, throw seven on seven, and it shows. And the guy is sensational so far. Accuracy down the football field. He's been really exceptional down the football field with that strong arm showing the touch inside the five yard line. I'm impressed so far with Brandon Whedon. Yeah the Cowboys have for the most part answered any questions here in the first half when they faced a little adversity they come right back with two touchdowns. Hunter set him up from the get go with his sensational 90 plus yard first quarter performance. If I was if I was playing devil's advocate I would say the last couple of years they wouldn't have had to throw that ball inside the fight because they were so dominating running the football. They're going to go back and try to work on that getting the ball into the end zone via the run inside the five. But again Whedon with that type of terrific accuracy and touch inside the five. He's been sensational. I got to say I've been impressed with his accuracy Bill. Here the, he is. Here's a kid that's renowned for his arm strength and yet every single football is, is thrown on the correct shoulder to the correct number. He's throwing it on time. He showed not only the strength but the accuracy down the field and then the touch pass. Flip it up there. It's like a free throw. Blackman goes again. That's an easy two on one situation. The quarterback and wide receiver against the cornerback of the defense. That's easy pickings. That's exactly what you want from an offense. 12 of 18 for 94 yards. This game couldn't have started any better for Wheaton. 26 year old junior from Edmond Santa Fe. Incomplete the other way as they look for Isaiah Barton tool disconnecting with his Juco receiver and it'll be second down and 10 with 451 to go here. Second quarter. First half action of the opener between Pac-10 Washington State Cougars and the Big 12's Oklahoma State Cowboys. Nice, uh, uh, a nice answer from Oklahoma State after starting this quarter fairly slow. 64 yards to minus 15 at one point in favor of Washington State. And Oklahoma State holds their neck on defense, gets the ball back for their offense, and Brandon Wheaton took over. Wide open is Barton, and Barton makes the grab and takes it into Cowboy territory just across the 50-yard line. Washington State showing some offensive momentum now. Yep. The tackle by Martin. And a great route on the outside. Not a fake, nothing to draw the linebackers up. Bartman just heads right by, past him. Uh, Barton just heads right past him. That's an easy pitch and catch with a single safety. That needs to be shored up. He either needs to be jammed at the line of scrimmage or there needs to be two safeties deep over the top of those slot receivers. His first five passes, 18 yards. His next five passes, 189 yards. Here he is ready to throw again. Now scampers. Cowboys converge quickly. Stop him at the 45. Play before last. This is either a busted coverage. You're going to see right there, linebacker very close in towards the line of scrimmage. Safety doesn't get a jam. This safety doesn't get a jam. He just goes in there and looks at the quarterback. That's as easy as it comes in offensive football right there. You're running right down the seam. Nothing but your shorts on. All you got to do is deliver the football on the frame. Bill Young can't be happy about that. That's a missed opportunity for the defense of the Cowboys. Second and six at the 45 of Oklahoma State. And across the 40, we'll see where they mark the line of scrimmage on that as the stop is made. Washington State trying to answer after Oklahoma State a pair of touchdowns and back and forth battle here. Yeah, got to get into the end zone on this series. I like what they're doing here. The sneak on third and one. This is one of my favorite plays in offensive football. No one expects it, and all you need is a third down. The last thing you want to do is, is sit in the shotgun and take a sack, and now you have to punt the football away. This is this is easy pickings. It's third and one. You got a big 200-pound quarterback. He's 6'3. Lean forward, get the first down, huddle up, and let's go. And do it with a quick tempo right after Mitz had made the run. So they make it first and ten at the 38 now. Going back is LeGuan Mitz. They give him the football and Mitz 
hit pretty hard near the 36 yard line for the junior from Redmond Washington. Stay with us here on Big 12 College Football Saturday. What's ahead on the McDonald's halftime report? Well, the former OSU coach Pat Jones, John Radigan in studio. Take out a look at the Utah State Oklahoma game down in Norman, not too far from here. Western Kentucky against number eight Nebraska tonight. SMU and Texas Tech also going. McDonald's halftime report right here on Big 12 College Football Saturday. How about Nebraska going with the young kid, Taylor Martinez, today? Yeah, looked a little bit of a surprise. They're trying to figure out who's going to be their full time signal caller. Nice hit that time by Martin in the secondary. This is a classic example of a quarterback and a wide receiver not being on the same page. Barton runs through the zone. This is zone defense, and he needs to stop right there, but he doesn't. He doesn't stop. He runs through the zone. The quarterback expects one thing. He runs another, and now it's on the back shoulder. See, why run right into the safety? Martin is already sitting right there. Settle yourself down. Give the quarterback your numbers, and that's an easy pitch and a catch for a first down. Third and eight in this big crowd at Boone Pickham Stadium. Trying to encourage the defense to come up with a stop with 2.16 to go first half. Jeff Toole, the quarterback, and timeout. Washington State. The Cougars will talk it over with a key third down situation for Paul Time Wolf out. and his ball club. Wolf, after eight successful years at Eastern Washington, now in his third year at his alma mater. And it would be a huge lift, Joel, if, if they could certainly get in the end zone. Absolutely. Here. Absolutely. I, I mean, clearly, because Oklahoma State has answered them in this quarter. You know, they went up quickly with those 17 points, and then Washington State battles all the way back. It's 17 to 10 at one point in this second quarter, and you've put, you put some good offensive drives together. If you're the Cougars, they stalled out. You know, you tried the fake field goal. It didn't work. Now you got to get the ball in the end zone. Yeah, there's been a bit of a change here with Oklahoma State this year with Mike Gundy giving up the range play calling-wise. Bill Young has seen a difference already with Dana Holgerson as the offensive coordinator, Mike Gundy being the traditional head coach. I worked, worked for John Cooper for several years, and he said never work for a guy that's a defensive coach. If you're a defensive coach, I always try to find an offensive coach. So it, it's good to do that. Now, Coach Gundy is doing a great job now that he's not the offensive coordinator from the standpoint that he's down coaching up the scout team for us and getting on those guys. And, and uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's been a, a fun experience this fall having him down there with our players. And I know our players really appreciate having him around. Paying more attention to the defense as well. They respond here. Leading the way, Rashetti Jones as the Cowboys respond on that third down situation and get the stop back at the 41 yard line or 40 right in between. And the junior with just a fast outside rush against right tackle Micah Hannum of Washington State and the speed. You know, we've talked about the speed of Oklahoma State so far. We see an example of it right there. And that's the last thing you want to do. Tool had points in, in, in the confines of yeah they could attempt a field goal you never want to take a sack to get yourself out of field goal position but he didn't have a lot to work with right there because Hanum got beat so bad around the edge Reed Forrest will come on to punt he stands on his own 47 yard line fair catch is called for and taken safely that time by Josh Cooper and at the 20 yard line will be a first and 10 Replay fueled by Gatorade. Well, it returns with an all-new season. Gatorade unites two South Side Chicago high school basketball teams, Bloom and Brother Rice, whose 2000 Super Sectional game ended in controversy. Watch it live at replaytheseries.com Friday, 7 p.m. I think there's some games that all of us would like to replay. Well, I'm just thinking about that. <laughs> Anybody who's played, I don't care if it's Pee Wee or Big 12 college football or NFL, you're going, man, I'd like to have that one back. That's right. <laughs> Kendall Hunter. They better catch him as Hunter, shedding tacklers, takes it to the Cougars sideline before he is knocked out of play at the 40, a 20-yard pickup. He may be at the double century by the break. This run... We'll tell you everything you need to know about Kendall Hunter. The vision, the stop, the starting ability, the toughness, and the power to break through a tackle, and the speed to get to the edge. Everything that a back needs to do, he showcased in that one run. Watch a coup push, pushing him out, and it's first and 10 at the 40. Whedon has all day, and it is incomplete intended for Chelf. 
Good defense there down the field. But Kendall Hunter, I just talked about everything you need to do with the football. Kendall Hunter comes up and wow, that is how you block out of the backfield. This is a terrific block. You go low. That is a powerful man right there. He's he's 200 pounds. He's ran for 200 yards, and yet he sticks his nose right in the middle of pass protection. That's going to get noticed by the guys watching for Sundays. I can tell you that right now. Hunter needs 16 yards for 200 to be precise, and it looks like he's going to get it right here. Kendall Hunter, this guy's on cue. He must have a headset on. He's unbelievable. I can tell you, this is the type of guy that you want to do everything you possibly can, not to wear him out, but to also give him the football as much as you possibly can. The stop and the start again, the power, the speed. They cannot stop Kendall Hunter. 202 now after an 18 yard pickup. And Bo Bowling making a sensational grab after he was clobbered at the 32 by Daniel Simmons. He holds on to the football. He had gotten into some off the field trouble, was dismissed from the team, out last year, came back as a walk on, proved himself worthy of a second opportunity, and he's made some nice plays tonight. This time, Jeremy Smith with Coyman making the tackle. This offense is absolutely explosive, and you see what happens when the Offensive line is able to give him a little bit of time and Brandon Whedon can set his feet and throw accurately down the football field You see what happens when a hole is opened up for Kendall Hunter and the explosiveness uh, Explosiveness that he has 16 for 202. It's the first half <laughs> This guy's unbelievable and people talking about the air raid offense and all of this other business will Kendall Hunter rush for the kind of yardage he had two years ago uh, I think that's the Dana Holgerson was talking to us and telling us, hey, I'm not into do we get it running? Do we get it passing? Is it bubble screens? Is it handoffs? We want to win right. number one. And it's a system. And, yeah. and, and the system works. If, if they're giving you the pass, then you pass it. If they're giving you the run, then you run it. If your personnel dictates that you run the football, then that's what you do. And Dana Holgerson is no dummy. He understands that Kittle Hunter is his best football player. He's going to continue. To, to hand this guy the football out of the backfield as much as he can. Second down here. Brandon Whedon, nice escape ability, dishes it to Blackman, smartly steps out of bounds, stops the clock with 22 seconds. They still have two timeouts remaining. This is a great mature play by Brandon Whedon. Steps up. Keeps the football safe, safe and then throws it only where his guy can get it. You throw it over the defense on the outside shoulder of the offensive player. Allow him to step out. That's great maturity right there. Game management. Now Hunter will run it and they'll call a timeout with 17, 16 seconds to go. The tackle made by Alex Hoffman Ellis. This, this is where you've got to understand the situation if you're Brandon Weed, you're going to call a timeout, come over there, get a drink of water and talk about it. Are we taking shots into the end zone? We still have one timeout left. Are we going to give it to Kendall Hunter again? Understand what you're doing. Are we going to call two plays in the huddle so we can hand it off and then come out and throw it? If we're just going to throw it, I want to put that football into the end zone every single time, although you don't have to because you have the timeout remaining and you can still get a first down at the three yard line. That's situational football, and those are all the things that they're talking about right now. They're telling the offense what they're going to need to do, but the quarterback conversation with Dana Holgerson, Whedon and Holgerson, is going just like that, Bill. What do we want to do? How many timeouts do we have? What's the situation that we're in? When you look, the OSU saw a moment ago the rushing record. Barry Sanders with Kendall Hunter with 200 yards here in the first half, and Comes on here, a lot of options as Joel just laid out for you with the Cowboys having, even though there's just 15 seconds, a timeout remaining. It's second and seven. We got time over the middle and Cooper is denied. And they'll use that. Well, no, the clock nope. stops for the first yeah, down. Yeah, he got so the they're first down. For the change. Smartly, Whedon understands the situation's right at the line of scrimmage. Hands it off to Kendall Hunter. Hunter lunges forward. Scores! Touchdown!
Terrific execution by Kendall Hunter on the run play, but for me it starts with Brandon Whedon. You know you don't have to go to the end zone. You complete the ball, be ready to snap it after they set the chains, and then let your horse get it done. The power getting the football into the end zone off of the spin. Unable to bring him down. Halston Higgins, the linebacker for Washington State, sees Hunter lean in for another touchdown for Oklahoma State. This guy is sensational. With Hunter getting his third TD as time expires. Talk about clock management. Well, they took care of it to a T. It's a lot of faith in your running back right there to give him the ball. 208 yards in the half for Kendall Hunter. Three touchdowns. Oklahoma State with a 38 to 10 lead and scoring the last 21 after Washington State had made a nice little response to an earlier shutout situation. Wow, what a half for the Cowboys and their outstanding running back Kendall Hunter. An All-American two years ago, hobbled by a leg injury. Tonight he's hobbling Washington State. Let's send it down to Emily Jones. Guys, thank you very much. Coach Gundy, what can you say about Kendall Hunter? Well, we were excited about letting him get back out here. I know that he's really hungry. Um, when you have something taken away from you like he had last year, he's really worked hard. So looking forward to seeing him in the second half. Brandon Whedon uh, coming in looking like an old pro out there. Well, he's doing a good job. You know, he made a few mistakes, but it just takes him a little time. And, and he's, set, he's keeping his composure and his poise, which is good. Defensively, a couple injuries up front. How are those guys, and how will you adjust if they're not able to go in the second half? Well, it looks like we've lost a couple guys for a, for a game or two, so we're going to play the freshman. All right, Coach okay, Gundy, thanks for the time. We appreciate it. Best of luck. Time now to send it to the studios for our McDonald's halftime report. Welcome back. They like the beat here in Stillwater with Oklahoma State 38-10 halftime lead over the Cougars of Washington State. Bill Land, Joel Klatt, Emily Jones with you. And here are the Academy Sports and Outdoor Right Stuff leaders from the first half. Some eye-popping numbers from Kendall Hunter and very efficient performances from the quarterbacks. Yeah, and even I mean even Jeff Tool from Washington State. I thought he's played very very well he's had some miscommunication on the outside with his receivers Whedon has been sensational uh, very accurate down the football field but the story tonight Kendall Hunter over 200 yards carries Kendall Hunter right off the get go getting into the end zone the second carry of the game after a tur turnover then he gets another carry going that same direction first quarter was all uh, uh, Oklahoma State late in the second half terrific showing by Brandon Whedon getting the football down the football field into the arms of Blackman, the wide receiver number 81. He's actually uh, showed a lot of athleticism up and over the defensive backs as we get started here in the second half. And Oklahoma State returning it here as the Cowboys bring it back with Justin Gilbert. And the first half possessions for the Cowboys, the TD right after the turnover, a couple of punts, another touchdown in a field goal. Then they hit a rough stretch, and wow, did they respond after the Cougars scored. Yeah, but don't worry. They got the old man. They got the maturity. <laughs> you know, he's the baseball player. He brings them back. Yeah, they didn't have necessarily have the success that they wanted to have earlier in this football game, but I guarantee you he, he went over and calmed them down and said, don't worry, guys. It's there. We're going to get this thing going. Plus, we've got 24 Kendall Hunter. They get the ball to start the second half. Hunter scored as time expired in the first half, and here's Blackman, who's got a couple of TDs. And looked like he almost was going to ladle almost. that ball for a moment, but uh, the smart thing, just hang on at this point, because if you're an OSU fan, you're thinking, hey, come out strong start, right, Joel, and put them out of their misery. Washington State saying, get a stop, maybe we get right back into it. Well, that's the toughest thing to do as a football team, because what creeps in at halftime when you're up 38 to 10 is complacency. And guys go out there and they don't have the same intensity level. If you're Brandon Whedon and Kendall Hunter, you got to get in somebody's face and say, we're going to take this football down and score. Reed finds Tracy Moore and Moore goes to the 37 yard line and it'll be a first down for Oklahoma State. Offense is all about matchups and finding an opportunity to put pressure on the defense and Dana Holgerson has been absolutely a mastermind tonight. Washington State can't keep two safeties back because they'll run the football. They keep one safety back and they throw. And Whedon again connects. He finds Cooper this time. Josh Cooper at the near the 43 yard line and is tackled by Ledgerwood. Mike Ledgerwood, the junior from Kennewick, Washington. 
Boy, this tempo. I mean, just terrific tempo by the Cowboys' offense. Kendall Hunter. And Hunter across the 45 near the 46 yard line. Kendall Hunter, remember, in that first half, just 18 carries to get 208 yards. He had the big one of 66 yards, tackled by Travis Long here. And again, right on the football. Washington State cannot substitute. Brandon Weeding at the line of scrimmage, getting the play and giving it to his horse, Kendall Hunter. Hunter nearly breaks that one. He gets the first down on third and short. Toomer with the stop. The number that people were buzzing about at halftime here was 332. That's Barry Sanders' school record for a single game rushing total. And Kendall Hunter, certainly with 208 in the first half, get an opportunity. We completes this one to Moore. Washington State wraps up low that time to stop him with the 43 of the Cougars. Now that looks like Texas Tech offense and Houston offense. That yeah. that's what Holgerson has brought. You put four wide receivers out there, three on one side, one on the other, and you just run hitches with them, and your quarterback by ratio picks the open one. It's very easy. Cowboys with a home opener here, and they've won 14 straight home openers. Handoff here. Randall and Randall across the 40 down to the 39. And for Oklahoma State, as they try to get in sync offensively with the, the new offense, remember they've got the opportunity. They got a nice home schedule before they go on the road. They got Troy next week, then Tulsa, and then they open up Big 12 play against Texas A&M here September 30th before they leave the state. What you're trying to do, if you're Mike Gundy, you're getting this football team prepared for Big 12 play. It's Myron Beck. Sam linebacker for Washington State is down here and to take a look at Oklahoma State's uh, upcoming games they're scheduled for the rest of the year. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's difficult. You got Texas. They're in the top 10 Nebraska. They're in the top 10 Oklahoma. They're in the top 10. But you're going to have an opportunity early. You've got Washington State tonight. Troy you got Tulsa before you get into A&M where you can really sure some things up. Hopefully uh, on the defensive side for Oklahoma State you can get healthy. Uh, they lost a couple of their defensive tackles as we heard coach talking about going into halftime Donaldson and Jarka were lost in the first half. You got a couple of freshmen now in there for them and Rogers and Collins uh, one true. That's David L. Collins number 98 Rogers. He's going to play a lot. He's a redshirt freshman. But you want to see your offense also pro progress and we're seeing that here tonight. Myron Beck the senior from Seattle taking off here is Hunter. Hunter to the end zone. Touchdown Cowboys. Look out Barry. Somebody better call Barry Sanders because <laughs> Kendall Hunter is coming for him tonight. The only thing that stopped Kendall Hunter there is the goal line. That would have been an 80 yard touchdown yeah. if he had I mean, it would have been whatever was left on the football field. Terrific blocking up front good hole but then again getting skinny and finding space as a running back that's what it's all about this guy can't say you can't say anything else about it. He's, he's terrific fourth touchdown 39 yard TD run and with the kick by Bailey the Cowboys with 45 points Hunter with 257 yards. Big 12 College Football Saturday is brought to you by McDonald's. Stop in and enjoy the McDouble on McDonald's dollar menu at participating locations. I'm loving it. By Phillips Television, so amazing you won't be able to take your eyes off of it. And by Priority Mail flat rate boxes only from the Postal Service. A simpler way to ship. Eskimo Joe is a longtime staple here in Stillwater. Kendall Hunter. Just an absolute incredible performance. 257 yards rushing and four scores as the Cowboys kick it off for the 45 to 10 lead. And Washington State will down it, bring it out at the 20. Bill and Joel Clatt with you up top, Emily Jones on the sideline. And glad to have with us the commissioner, Dan Beebe, has joined us. And 
No doubt with a Pac-10 versus Big 12, you were in the OSU colors. That's right. That's right. That's, yep. I, uh, I know what I'm doing here. I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, you probably wondered what you were doing for a while this summer, did you? Is it great to finally get to football and see everything back on the field instead of talking about who's where and what's yeah. going to happen to the league? It really is. It's, it's, uh, it certainly was a trial by fire this summer, most challenging time of my career. But I think we ended up in a terrific place. Um, and really the best place for college sports generally. I really think that college sports are meant to be in a geographic region. We've kept that together. These 10, insti 10 institutions continuing are really devoted to each other in a way that I've never seen before. You know, we were talking before uh, during halftime, and you talked about how, yeah, you fought hard to keep the 12 together, but uh, the byproduct of, of the two leaving Nebraska and Colorado is the fact that you found a really tight knit group of 10 that wanted to stay and found something very cohesive together. Montgomery with the carry his second here of uh, this possession it'll be a third down and medium coming up. Well that's right Joel um, it really was a happy occurrence after we worked hard lost two valuable members we hate that but really what came together are 10 institutions that said you know what this is a pretty good deal these, these 10 institutions get to play a round robin cement the relationships by seeing each other every year double round robin in basketball having terrific programs like Kansas at your court every year it really came together in a ter terrific way third down and four here Third quarter, 11.03 to go. Washington State trying to slow down the Pokes who have a 35 point lead. Got Commissioner Dan Beebe with us here in the booth as Tool has this one swatted away. Well, Dan, as things have simmered down a little bit, although there's still rumblings with BYU now going independent and this other stuff. Uh, as of the particulars, Colorado, when will you know whether they'll exit after this season or will they definitely be here? for another year uh, that's still to be determined we're working on it uh, rapidly we're still in negotiations with Colorado and uh, you know everything's been very cordial but there is disagreement about some items that we have to work through and we're in the process of doing that so I think everybody would like to have it, it uh, to move on with their futures next year but we'll just have to see how it goes we have uh, we have about uh, two or three weeks to get that figured out You've got to be excited about this year in the Big 12. Yeah, there are some very familiar faces that are leaving this conference. Colt McCoy uh, now uh, up there in, in Cleveland. you got Sam Bradford, the top pick in the draft. A couple of outstanding defensive linemen and Gerald McCoy and Dominican Sue that leave as Bryant's gone. And yet they just get restocked. All these schools, great faces like here, Brandon Whedon, a terrific, well-spoken individual, Kendall Hunter and what he's doing tonight. There's great stories around the league. Landry Jones is going to step in and try to do big things at Oklahoma. You've got to be excited about this football uh, year for the Big 12. It's just, it's really great every year. And you know what, Joel, you've seen it for yeah. so long. You, you felt it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and That's the truth. You know, uh, Kendall Hunter, what a, what a night. And look at what Daniel Thomas did for Kansas State today. 235 or 34 yards against UCLA. I mean, they're, they just keep plugging in the kids. Really, really, really good coaches. We're really blessed to have the coaches that we have in this league. And um, we're having a good uh, first weekend here, it looks like. Well, and some new faces in the coaching ranks as well. Turner Gill comes in and steps in at, at Kansas. You got Tommy Tuberville uh, filling in for Mike Leach at Texas Tech. That's kind of a change in culture, I know. but. I know a lot of people are excited to see what these two individuals are able to do. Turner Gill, a lot of success at Buffalo, and, and Tommy Tuberville, a, a distant change, I guess you could say, from what has been uh, in place at Texas Tech. Right. I mean, you, you can't uh, you can't debate either one of those two in terms of their success at their previous locations. I think they're going to be tremendous coaches in the league. Both are really good gentlemen, and I think they're going to be uh, they're going to be around for quite a while. Joseph Randall getting some carries here as Kendall Hunter is not in the ball game for the moment. And who knows what Mike Gundy will choose to do. I think Mike got a text from Barry Sanders. That's what they, they were teammates. He got a text. Barry said, come on. Come on. Let's stick together. We, you know, we played for Pat Jones. Come on. That's we stick right. together. Quarterbacks start to break the record. You can stop them. Here's Whedon. Wide open, yeah. nice pitch and catch. Great Once timing. again, boy, Justin Blackman has looked superb, and Whedon has made him look good. Yeah, he? he sure has, and, and timing is a great asset for your quarterback, especially when the wide receiver knows exactly when the football is going to be delivered. And boy, he just throws such a catchable pass. It's a beautiful pass, good RPMs. 
all of those things that you want to see up and over the defense that second level of the defense just drops right in on the frame of the wide receiver Brandon Whedon he's having a great night 18 yards play action again and they come back this time it is complete down the sideline to Isaiah Anderson Anderson is a sophomore from Wichita Falls Texas That's makes the reception the Cowboys are about to knock on the door again Whedon has completed his last eight passes yeah good play action fake and again great balance in the pocket that's what allows you to deliver the football down the field with accuracy and velocity is your feet being balanced in the pocket Whedon's putting on a clinic right now once again, we great protection and oh, a drop this time on the 10 yard line. Anderson like to have another opportunity at that. You know, Dan, one of the things that I'm really looking forward to, not just this season, but when you get to a full round robin in football, to me, we always have disagreements or arguments about different things we like. A conference to me is when everybody plays everybody. And yeah. I think a lot of the coaches are looking forward to that. I think they are too. And you know, we've been in the BCS National Championship game more than any other conference. We'd like to have won a couple more, but still, that's quite an accomplishment. Whedon, touchdown once again. It is Blackman, his third TD reception as the commissioner holds off knowing another TD was about to happen. <laughs> You, you well, saw him look into the end zone and on the outside again Blackman they're going to see the coverage and Brandon Whedon with those balanced feet in the pocket again throws a terrific pass single high safety you got no you got man to man on the bottom and Blackman's going to beat the corner he's just bigger he's a big frame he's athletic and again delivered at the back of the end zone guys I can't harp on enough the fact that Whedon has been so accurate down the field and now tackled his the runner and they do not get the conversion but Blackman getting congrats all the way around with it 51 to 10 Oklahoma State in or out. September 12th regular season begins a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader listen up there'll be a quiz first the Panthers take on Manning and the Giants or the Eagles battle the Steelers or the Lions and Bears and the Packers meet the Eagles in Philly for the 49ers Seahawks or the Cardinals Rams coverage begins Sunday September 12th with the Ford Fox NFL pregame show at noon Eastern 9 Pacific my, my man Justin Blackman was a little too excited about his touchdown pass yeah he actually injured his quarterback on the celebration. Not good. No, Blackman having a great night. Eight for 125 and three touches. And we're taking a look at Brandon Whedon. Hopefully he's okay. The Cowboys, there's a big drop off from Whedon to their battle for that number two spot. Yep. Couple and of freshmen. Let's take a look at this. And they, they go for a five and oh, that is not good. And I tell you what, Cardinal rule. And, and Whedon should know this. He's a pitcher. Yeah. He's a former pitcher. You never celebrate with your throwing hand. Yeah. So he's going to take a look. They've got all the facilities uh, necessary, x-rays, pharmacy, everything yeah. you could possibly want some. right here at Boone Pickens Stadium. So they're going to go back. If that's just a dislocation, he'll be fine. I mean, all of us have dislocated fingers during games and come back and play. So if that's just what happened, that, that'll be just fine. I can't imagine it would be anything more. I mean, it was just a, a five. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope not. What yeah. a freak thing that would be. As Tool comes out throwing here, it's underthrown. Glad to have the commissioner, Dan Beebe, with us here from the Big 12 Conference with the conference opener. And we were just talking during the break. What a great way for college football to open the season. Just end to end football starting on Thursday. You're headed to Lubbock here for Texas Tech and SMU tomorrow, right? That's right. And, and, and just so that other fans don't uh, get confused here, I had Iowa State shirt on a Thursday. I'll have a <laughs> Texas Tech shirt on next week, Oklahoma. The week after that will be Texas. So I love these non-conference games when I get to cheer as much as the fans <laughs> There do. you go. We I, like that. Did you do a doubleheader today? Were you somewhere else? No, nope, I just came here. I like your travel log, though. It, I get to rack up some miles, I'll tell you that. <laughs> You know, what I, what I was going to say, though, is, you know, with our 10-member conference now, we won't have the championship game. Right. But we've had seven appearances in the national championship, and frankly, over the time we've, we've been in existence, and that's more than any other conference, there have been three times when we've had schools that would have gone or that's teams right. that would have gone in the right. national championship, but they got beat in our championship and, game. And, so. and the championship game actually hurt the conference because of that. Right. And, you know, the SEC, it's helped them. For us, it, it, it has not helped our, our institutions when they uh, go play in that game. Nebraska in the first year uh, of the championship game, they were in line to play for the championship. Kansas State, when Sir Parker and Texas A&M ended up beating them. 
Tool going deep, overthrown near the third. And of can you come up with a third? I, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm <laughs> thinking. <laughs> it's the most very, recent. Very, very hard. Uh, Missouri. Correct. Missouri, yeah. when they were playing as the underdog, and I believe 08. Right? Was it 08? Yes. No, no, no. It was 07. 07. 07 championship. 07. Right. They, they were ranked number one in the country, an underdog in the Alamo Dome, and, and lost that game to Oklahoma. Right. That's a tough one because they're the only underdog. To right. <laughs> that would have gone on to play for the national championship. Washington State will kick it away here with 8.43 to go in the third quarter. And Reed Forrest with the kick. Gilbert with the return. And they'll end it right there as it'll be possession coming up for Oklahoma State. Dan Baby, thanks very much for the time. Thank Appreciate you it. very much. It's Appreciate been a pleasure. It, Good work, Jen. Nice work this work, summer. After the break, John Radigan, Academy Sports and Outdoors game break. John Radigan in the Fox Sports studios with an academy game break. DeMarco Murray of the Oklahoma Sooners with a 63-yard run. It's a scoring fest in Norman. Utah State has just scored. It's 31-24, Joel. Joel. DeMarco Murray, another guy that has battled injuries that people are saying, why not for a Heisman Trophy candidate? Well. There's a guy here in Stillwater that might be getting that recognition as well with the performance Kendall Hunter's had tonight. We talked about Thomas up at Kansas State. So the Big 12 this year appears to be the year of the running back. Clint Shelf comes on at quarterback now as Hunter appears to be sidelined for the rest of the night because of uh, the situation. And Shelf is a redshirt freshman from Enid, Oklahoma. His brother Colton is also on the club as a wideout. And Shelf with about 8.24 to go here in the third quarter, getting his first shot. Yep. Coyman makes the tackle on that play. Redshirt freshman, this is a great opportunity for him to come in, get his feet wet in college football, and learn some things. Because I, I can tell you this right now, you learn more about yourself in the first time you throw some complete passes, some incomplete passes, your first interception, your mistakes. And that right there was a beautiful pass right over the middle. That's a confident throw right over the middle to Tracy Moore. The sophomore as Whedon comes back on the field. Boy, if you're Mike Gundy, you've got some hard decisions to make right here. You're up. You've got that lead, Bill, that you, you think to yourself, I know I don't have anything behind Whedon. Not to take anything away from Chell, but he's a redshirt freshman. Kendall Hunter is absolutely sensational tonight. I might want to just want to stick with my backup guys, see what they can do. My guys already showed me what they can do as far as Whedon and Hunter. Well, uh, and I would guess what you juggled there, Joel, is the situation of Wheaton's not experienced. That's You'd true. You'd like him to play more, right? Because you need to get him snaps. Uh, but you'll, you, you'll you don't want anybody you'll to get never hurt. sleep. You'll never yeah. live it down if he goes out there. You're right, and your line of, of thinking is absolutely correct, but you'll never live it down if he goes down. Right, right. Uh, and but that's the hard part and he might be thinking just that right now where hey he high-fived or low-fived <laughs> and, right. and got hurt you know what's going to happen with the, and we've seen the other thing with these injuries and you know coaches they and I don't blame them they get a little paranoid when sure. you have a game like tonight all kinds of guys are going down some serious and some not but there's been a lot of people that have left the field with injury tonight the latest one out being Wolf Graham so uh, it's the biggest fear of the coach because the health is something you cannot control. And you see Paul Wolf wondering, all right, who's next on my side? As Wolfram goes out. Now, as for Hunter, his 257 yards, 12th best for a single game night in OSU history. Shelf couldn't escape it this time, and he is sacked on the play at the 44 yard line. We've got 707 and counting to go here in the third quarter. Our first to 10 line is brought to you by Phillips Televisions. Bill Land, Joel Klatt, Emily Jones, and the College Football Saturday crew with you. Glad to have you aboard here tonight for the season opener where the Cowboys have ripped it open to a 41 point advantage. Kelf delivers complete to midfield this time to Josh Cooper. Cooper caught a bit of a foot as they wrestled to the ground. This is an exceptional time to get these guys that are sophomores, juniors that have not played a lot of football, freshmen, redshirt freshmen, 
an opportunity to get in here and you got to play you get to play against a Pac-10 opponent like I said this is a learning experience and that's why Dana Holgren very astute in going right to his players to teach them because again learning experience teachable moments for young players are what make them great down the road he came after the punt nearly got it but did not and Washington State will regain possession near the 15 16 yard line a 39 yard punt and more on the injury situation we'll send it down to Emily Jones well guys as far as Brandon Whedon is concerned nothing official from the Oklahoma State training staff however he did make his way out of the locker room back onto the field nothing was taped or wrapped and um, I read his lips and what I understand to be the words I'm fine it came out of his mouth so that's the latest <laughs> Tell you what, lip reading, very valuable asset yeah. for the sideline reporter these days with the uh, injury situation. And coaches <laughs> being very protective at times. So that's, that's another right. talent that Emily Jones has got. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. you. Washington State with it now. Defensive side of the ball, redshirt freshman Anthony Rogers in there, 94. Nice tackle. Here's a guy, 285, big kid, athletic kid. That's a, you know, every time that we hear Bill Young talk, it's always about the athletic nature of his defense the speed and this Anthony Rogers they're very excited about him 6'3 285 pounds you can see why right now very good motor and good ball skills has a nose for the football gets the ball carrier down to the ground and they try to keep it simple and that allows the younger players less experienced maybe a chance to come in and contribute right away incomplete here is the battle in the secondary and we're fighting for the football that was Andre May who knocked it away for the Cowboys with Marquise Wilson going up for the Cougs. And this is a classic true freshman stopping in just like in high school and slowing down on his route allowing the defensive back to gain on him. You've got to continue to run to teach your quarterback to throw it out there because I've got the speed I've got the ability to go get it. That's a that's a true freshman running around. He will learn along with his young quarterback that speed will kill a defense. Tool drops it off and tackled at the 24 yard line. Teams will tell you what, the hitting has not dropped off at nope. all. Nope, not, not at all. The intensity level is, is very much up there, and that's what Bill Young is going to want to watch on film. When he turns on the film, even though it's 51 to 10 and it's in the third quarter, he's going to want to see guys out there flying around, lining up correctly tackling properly so that they can continue to build upon what they've been able to achieve tonight. Carl Winston the running back on that play and punt situation again on a fourth and two. Good punt. Gilbert chasing grabs around the 20 tries to circle breaks one or two and then he paid dearly for that at the 15 yard line where he is stopped and the Cowboys will take over there. What a terrific punt right there. 55 yards, minus six on the return. You're reading uh, some of the articles about this Washington State team. Number eight, the punter, Reed Forrest. He's a senior. He had 86 attempts, punts, last year. Incredible. And just to give you an idea, that's almost seven punts a game for Washington State. Hit five miles of punts a year ago for Washington. Five miles. And average 43 a game, third in the Pac-10, which is great, but you'd like to get it where, let's see if we can't trim about three or four punts a game off of that. Yeah, tuck. I was going to say, you, the, the coverage is great, the 43 yeah. number, but you want to go out there and only have two or three punts a game at, at most. Joseph Randall on that play sets up a second and two for Oklahoma State. Randall getting a lot of action tonight as the Cowboys were threatened at they one were. point after a 17 0 lead. Grasso at a 56 yard field goal. Wilson, the 48 yard TD pass reception was 17 10. Then OSU just dominated. Blackman, a couple of scores. Hunter went crazy again. And they led at the break 38 10. And Attacked on two more scores here in the third quarter with under four minutes to go now in the third and you're looking at Chelf. Chelf and Johnny Deaton were fighting for Dana Holgerson's approval as the backup quarterback and he said really not a nickels difference between the two and most will say around here that there was a big difference between Whedon and those two. Right. So there is a concern in the case of Whedon with an injury as there is most places Joel but when your starter is inexperienced, yep. well, you know your backups 
are zilch. So they really need him to stay healthy. Well, and, and I think he can. He's, he's got the frame. I mean, he's 6'4", about yeah. 220 pounds. He is just a junior. Even though he's 26 right now, he'll turn 27 in October. Just to give you an idea, he was born in October of 1983. The true freshmen on this football team were born in 1991 and 1992. That is that? a heck of a difference right there. We got a flag. You might have seen it when the pressure as they again came after the punter for Oklahoma State, Quinn Sharp, and flag was thrown back there. Running into the kicker, five-yard penalty, first down. So the Cowboys, remember that's running into the kicker, not roughing, and because it was fourth and two, enough to give them the first down. And OSU will maintain possession. Ever since about the first, oh, four minutes of this football game, it's actually been a pretty clean football game. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> they look about the same age, don't they? 26 and what? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 was, I was an 82 kid, but I, I was February. So I'm, I'm, I'm like two years older than Brandon Wheaton. I'll tell you what, we got here yesterday. He went up and just <laughs> hugged him and said, man, another baseball player, quarterback, you're my guy. Oh, I loved it. Boy, good I thing Wheaton it. played well. That's right. You'd have covered for him if he had. This is what you don't want to see. No. Ne neither coach wants this. Nick Martinez, the left tackle here, is going to get a personal foul. Mike Gundy is not going to be happy about that. Higgins had made the, or Markle had made the tackle on the play. I see him sorted out. Dead ball, personal foul, number 75, Oklahoma State. 15 yard penalty, second down. Joel, I, I think we're underestimating uh, what's going on between you and Brandon Whedon. I would call it a full blown man crush. <laughs> well, uh, listen, you, you, you got to have one. If anybody's been watching, uh, you know, Big 12 football Saturdays for the last couple of years, you know that I love Todd Reesing. Uh, I've been. Yeah, I, I just love the way he played. Well, now my guy's Brandon Whedon. Yeah. I've got to go with him. He's a baseball guy. He's an old fella. He yeah. seemed to be okay with it, though, yesterday when I informed him of uh, said man crush. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, you know, un unspoken ties between a couple of baseball guys, right? <laughs> well, I tell you what, you do understand what the guy's gone through. Sure. And sure. it's been interesting, the process, uh, and uh, never losing the love for the game of football and coming back. His performance tonight's been pretty impressive. It, it absolutely has. And, and I, I would argue that the rigors of minor league baseball and, you know, kind of all, all joking aside, the rigors of minor league baseball and baseball in general and the inherent failure that comes with the game of baseball. You, you, you know, you go to the Hall of Fame if you're successful 33% of the time. And, and the inherent failures in that, uh, the, the downtime, the amount of work that you have to put in when people aren't forcing you to, I mean, those things are uh, just priceless. Once you get to this level, you come in, you have a locker, you think you're in the big leagues, you're finally eating good meals. It's not mayonnaise sandwiches and Medicine Hat Canada. I mean, th <laughs> things like that are just absolutely priceless, and it will pay dividends for Brandon Whedon. That's why I think he will have a good year. And we've seen the skill level, which you got to have, but then the perseverance, the maturity, and the intangibles that you gain through baseball, I think you're going to pay off huge for him. Oh, the mayo sandwich. Oh, yeah, the mayo sandwich. <laughs> the kick this time is clean and is returned to the 45-yard line by Brooks. Another flag. I beg your pardon. I thought we might have had a clean play there. Leon Brooks was on the return. Clean it up, fellas. Still After the play, to go. number 80, Oklahoma State. Unsportsmanlike, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. So Cooper Bassett gets called for that, and Bill Young having a word with him. You, you can turn a real positive game real sour yeah. quickly. You see, the, you see the look on these coaches' face. Mike Gundy right here for Oklahoma State. You know, if Paul Wolf is hit, if his, if his guys start getting into these exchanges, there's going to be some fellas running on Monday. I can tell you that. First and ten at the 40. 
on the ground as again the Cougars trying to get something going with a little momentum that they had at some point in that first half. Carl Winston again the carrier. Paul Wolf in his third year. And Wolf knows he's got his work cut out for him. But as we watched him yesterday, you look for small things, and they yeah. have a togetherness, or they feel they do with this team that they've not had in the previous two. He, he thinks this is the first team of his three that have really, has really bought into what he's selling, uh, you know, which is a blue collar mentality, a, a work hard mentality. Um, it, it's definitely going to help to have a guy like Steve Morton uh, on his staff. The guy he played for was the O line coach when he played at, at Washington State University. And so now he's back. He's going to help the continuity up front. It's going to take some time. They have, I mean, a lot of a lot of coaches try to tell you that the program was, was kind of decimated when they got there. But Washington State, they only had three guys. I, I don't want to steal this from you. You gave this to well, me. No, you th go ahead. This, it's all about talent, folks. That's we all right. know that. I mean. <laughs> Wolf inherited three players who were drafted or signed free agent deals in the NFL. Three. Every other new coach at Washington State going back 30 years had inherited 14 to 16 NFL caliber players in his first two years. The cupboard was empty. It wasn't yeah. bare. There's nothing there. And as a result, he's had to bite the bullet. And it takes a while. You don't well, just yeah. build a football program overnight. And he, yep. Stay with us. That's the end of the third quarter. 51-10. Oklahoma State rolling on opening night. You're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Rated R. Our Honda game summary. Look at the numbers for the Cowboys. Kendall Hunter with 21 carries, 257 and four scores. Whedon, what a did debut as a starter. And Justin Blackman with three touchdowns. It adds up 51 10 Oklahoma State and a number that's not on there. The Cowboys 304 yards of offense in the third quarter alone. They now have 519 for the game to 235 for the Cougars of Washington State. Cougs ball third down here. And with the carry is Winston. And Carl takes it to the 28 yard line. First down, Washington State. Bill Young's going to want to see his defense bow up and play some good defense. You know, that, that's the last thing that you want to see is that your guys will go out there and take plays off, have missed assignments. He's going to be watching this film very carefully. These plays get graded just like all the others. And Winston tried to stretch it out that time and was brought down by Lewis for Oklahoma State. Number 11, Sean Lewis, he, the he, linebacker. He's impressive. Uh, the true freshman, Sean Lewis, 5'11", 212 pounds. You see the power that he has and the speed. That's what you like to see. A lot of times true freshmen come in and they've got to fight that steep learning curve. Sean Lewis has done a nice job getting himself into the two deep, giving him opportunity, uh, himself an opportunity to play as a true freshman. And now he's got some valuable time out on the field. He's going to play the whole fourth quarter. Second and ten for the Cougars. Play action from Tool to quarterback and completes it out to the 20 and down to the 18 yard line for Washington State. Carrying the football was Richmond and Lewis again making the stop. Marcus Richmond with the reception on the play. Yeah, I, I like my guy, Sean Lewis, here. He bites on the run fake, but then he gets out into space. He understands he makes a mistake, but then the speed to catch up. I mean, they have recruited some speed here to Stillwater, Oklahoma. This defense can fly because of guys like Sean Lewis. He's Listen, he's not some skinny 165-pound kid that can run. He's full 212 and can play middle linebacker and outside linebacker in the Big 12, and he can flat fly. First and 10 for Washington State. Bounced, I thought, as connecting with Wilson. Hedgepeth was covering on the play. Looks close. Uh, yeah. He did have his. Let's take another look. Did have his hands down near the ground, kind of under the football. Oh, very close. Very close. It very well could have been a catch. Give it to him and like a 6 3 shortstop. Nice scoop. Oh, Winston 
Rocked hard there. As he crosses the 10 yard line. Victor Johnson. Victor Johnson from his free safety position coming up with that that final blow on the ball carrier. Man, these Oklahoma State guys, I mean, they can they can run. Well, you can see they're anxious to play. Glad to have you with us here as Academy Sports and Outdoors presents college football Saturday here at Pickett Stadium in Stillwater. Big 12, Big Pac-10. Bill Land alongside Joel Platt, Emily Jones roaming the sidelines, and the Cowboys defense trying to stop Washington State from getting in again. This one just thrown away by Tool. The pressure was on from Justin Gent from the linebacker spot coming on. Yeah, he, he's had a, a really good game, Gent. He's the top side linebacker, and he's just eyeing the quarterback almost like a roaming defender, and he gets all the way to him and is careful. He doesn't necessarily throw the quarterback down. That would have been a, a penalty. You just jump on, let him go, falls to the ground. Great pursuit there from the senior Justin Jen making his first career start tonight. Seven tackles in that first career start. He's played very aggressively. Bill Young's going to love seeing that on the film. It's that aggressive style of defense, forming up some guys, sticking his head in there, not afraid of contact. On a fourth and three, a timeout is called by Washington State. 12.06 to go in the ball game, and the Cougar fans that have traveled here still supporting their guys, even though it's 51 10 OSU. Washington State fans pulling for their guys here with a fourth and three coming up. They're at the nine of Oklahoma State. You're going to need a little bit more than the spirit fingers. Yeah. Uh, Voodoo and Hexing are going to be. Could take an unbelievable comeback here. At this point, though, Washington State looking to make small steps. And if they could score, number one, get the first down, that'd be one. Across the middle, incomplete. Flag is thrown. It'll be an interference call against the Pokes, it appears. Might even call uh, targeting with the head, possibly. Victor Johnson appeared to be. I hope his buddies wave him off of this because if this is targeting with the head, this is a, a ridiculous call. There's no foul on the play. First down, Oklahoma State. Nicely done, boys. Yep. yep. And we've talked a lot with Walt Anderson. That's the Big right. 12 officials right. have been kind enough to include us in some of their summer meetings, and they uh, got together, made the right call. Hey, if you're talking hard working tonight, how about the Polaris' hardest working player? Got to be Kendall Hunter. What wow. a night. Well, this was his second carry of the game. It stopped in the end zone, but it just was starting at that point. Kendall Hunter showed us everything he was about. He blocked in the backfield. He did everything on the outside. Great vision, finding the hole, getting skinny, and then taking off towards the end zone. Terrific speed and balance. I can tell that he has spent a lot of time in the in the weight room. He rehabbed all of those injuries. He is ready to go for this his senior season. I'm excited to see what's going on for this kid the rest of the year. He's legitimately one of the best players in the country, which puts him on that short list of Heisman contenders out of the Big 12. Joseph Randall the carry again. You might have noticed the new quarterback, Johnny Deaton, gets a shot now. The third signal caller for Mike Gundy's pokes behind Brandon Whedon, who threw for over 200 yards, and then Clint Shelf got a series or two. Now it is Deaton's opportunity. And everybody diving on that loose one. Deaton is a redshirt freshman from Sand Springs, Oklahoma, right outside of Tulsa, Charles Page High School. He arrived in this gives, you know, January. Yeah, well, yeah, and this gives him, a, I think he's a true freshman. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. And this gives Dana Holgerson the opportunity to really evaluate his backup situation on film. In a I mean, these, these bullets are as live as it gets. Uh, you know, these Washington State players or scholarship players are going to be coming after you. And so this is your opportunity to really evaluate your quarterbacks. Overthrown here. Yeah, and, and many times I would think, Joel, the, the problem you have, not just as a coach evaluating, but as a player, you want to impress that coach. Well, you're getting more than, well, there's two minutes to go in the game. You're up. No, you get a chance. We got 10.52 to go. That's right. Shelf got a couple series. You get a chance to at least develop something here. Dana Holgerson never stops coaching. No. That, that's a true coach right there. And, and 
you might think to yourself, well, here's a guy out of the elite school of thought, and he's just going to want to pass the football. No, he's a football guy, mm -hmm. and, and this is the type of guy that understands running the football. He understands throwing the football. He understands the, the mismatch opportunity that you can get formation with formations. Dana Holgerson's a heck of a coach. He's never going to stop coaching, even when they're up 51 to 10. 45-yard punt, and Leon Brooks on the receiving end. We'll be right back with a brief timeout, 51-10. Big 12 College Football Saturday is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, low price every day. And brought to you in part by Jack in the Box, where you can get anything on the menu any time of day. By Phillips Television, so amazing you won't be able to take your eyes off of it. And by Wingstop. Want wings? Choose from nine mouth-watering flavors at Wingstop, the wing experts. Folks cruising down near campus. And some folks, many have exited with Oklahoma State in control here, 51 to 10. Meanwhile, Washington State going to work again. And Tool finds an open receiver and completes it. Nice game for first down to Isaiah Barton as Roberts makes the tackle for the Cowboys. Or I'm sorry, Amati. Good footwork. I, I, I'd like to see him not stop his feet in the pocket. If you're going to get picky on a quarterback, especially a young quarterback, sometimes they get fascinated with what's going on down the football field and they stop their feet. But I've been impressed with Jeff. I think that Washington State has themselves a very good quarterback. We saw the, yeah. the touchdown earlier in the game to Marquise Wilson. Uh, that was a terrific football thrown. I think that he's kept his poise. He's going to continue to learn how to compete, how to lead his guys in the face of adversity. He brought him back down 17-0. Uh, pulling it as close to 17-10. To so, got themselves a nice quarterback and I think a good crop of young players to build with. And I think that's what Paul Wolf, uh, Wolf is so proud of is he believes he's doing it the right way. Thrown for 166 yards, second and 13 here for Tool and company. And going to Wilson, he's got it at the 10, the five, and he scores! Marquise Wilson gets his second touchdown. Boy, this freshman can certainly play. And the Cougars pick up another six. And my man, number 10, Jeff Tool, stood in the pocket. I'm sure he understood that there was going to be guys breathing down his back. Stood tall, knew he was going to get hit, and delivered a strike down the football field. That's a terrific thro throw right there. That's good maturity. That's the maturation process of a young quarterback coming into play right now. 47 yards for Wilson. He had a 48-yard reception the first time. For the three plays under review, rolling on the field was touchdown. Well, we'll have a little video review here. Good ball fake, steps up. This is when you know you step up, you know you're about to get whacked. He did right from that backside, but Marquise Wilson, good route. This is this is an impressive wide receiver. He's got that length, Bill, in order to, to go up and get the football. The athleticism does look like he's going to be short there. His knee was down at the one. The football wasn't quite across the goal line. Yeah, that's going to be at the one yard line. The ruling was a touchdown. And they take a look to. That's too bad. Could have been his second of the night. Yeah. That one's going to come out. Jeff Toole and the Cougs are going to have to come back on this football field. Certainly appear that way. We wait for the official ruling. Nine thirty six remaining, fifty one sixteen. At the moment, it's six of those sixteen. Points, uh, yeah, in limbo in right question, now. Yeah. <laughs> well, for Washington State, it's a ball club that uh, desperately wanted to come out with a strong performance and. This is a good look here. There his knee is down. down. Yep, it's absolutely short. Yep. Ball's gonna be on the one yard line. The back judge wanted to call it down at the one. You see him talking to each other. Yeah. <laughs> one of them signaled me thought, oh, shoot. After review, the catch was made and the runner was down at the one. It'll be first and goal from the one. Okay. 
Now, if you're OSU and Bill Young, you say to your defensive group, all right, guys, we get to work on a goal line stand, right? Absolutely. I mean, you never know where Absolutely. this may be huge, even though tonight it will not be a factor. You're, you're teaching them all, all the details. You know, football coaches constantly say, you got to pay attention to the details because through the de details is where greatness is realized. So he's talking about getting low, uh, getting leverage, all those things. He wants to see that play out right now. They're going to try to run it, and they do. Oh, the ball was popped loose, but it crossed the plane, and it will be a rule touchdown here. Mitz, the running back, with the score for the Cougars. Good tough run there from Mitz. There was a few Cowboys that had a chance at him in the backfield. Just kept his legs moving. Very good run. You see him right there. Runs out of the tackle in the backfield. Gent has a chance at the one yard line. Fans have just seen the instant replay. They want that one reviewed here. <laughs> That's not going to happen. The extra point is good. And they say, all right, enough, enough. 9-17 before Eskimo Joes. 51-10, <laughs> OSU. Fifty-one seventeen with Oklahoma State on top. The Cougars of Washington State getting another TD. Last year they only averaged 12 points a game, so they are making some improvements. Offensively, they have been all right at times tonight. Defensively, they've not had any answer for Oklahoma State in, in any area when the Cowboys were truly focused, it appeared. Something tells me that there's going to be a lot of teams that don't have an answer for Kendall Hunter in the Oklahoma State offense. I mean, before it was kind of in the blink of an eye, they turned it on and it was it was just 51 points. Yeah, exactly. Cowboys on the return and out near the 25 yard line for OSU stopped on the play is Johnny Thomas. Well, Johnny Thomas. And Kyle McCartney makes the stop after a 15 yard Let's kick go. return for Thomas. You know, one of the reasons why Texas and OU have had so much success over the last few years at the top of this division, even though Oklahoma State was able to finish second in the South a year ago, is speed and athleticism. Because, yes, you do have to be sound in the X's and the O's, but you still need the Jimmys and the Joes. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing that from Oklahoma State. You know, these facilities coming up and, and, and uh, Boone Pickens being so generous to this university, you're, you're starting to see the fruits of that because we toured the facilities yesterday, Bill. If they get a kid on campus, it'll be hard for that kid to leave and, and not commit to Oklahoma State. With what they see and what they tour and with what their lifestyle will be like as a football player here at Oklahoma State University, they're doing it the right way. They do have the infrastructure to provide themselves with a, with a lasting effect of good athletic players that can win football games. Yeah, and most if not all of the Big 12 is just absolutely amazing yeah. facilities. Oklahoma State's really are, are hard to, to match. You might have great facilities, but there's there's not a thing missing. They, the, the thing they are missing from the coaching standpoint is they want an indoor facility and they, they will get that eventually as well. But uh, this structure is just absolutely incredible. Deaton is back in as the quarterback for Oklahoma State and we'll see. I think the other thing to watch out of this game you got to know other coaches around the country. Future Cowboy opponents are going, thank goodness we got a tape to look at because yeah. when Mike Gundy hired Dana Holgerson, they knew, all right, he's got a different group of personnel. They got a great running back. Are they going to throw it 50 times? Well, they got it to him 21 times for 257 yards running, and it'll give them an opportunity to say, all right, what do they have as this one falls loose on the ground? And the Cougars indicating they've got him. See Holgerson not happy there. The true freshman Joseph Randall. The ball jarred out. It's yeah. going to be fourth down there. Oklahoma State is going to have to punt this ball away. Coaches never stop being coaches. That's that's my favorite part of watching games like this. You see a true freshman Joseph Randall. It's probably the first time in his life that he's been hit with that type of force directly on the football, and yet the coach still thinks to himself, "Oh, are we going to sure that up on Monday?" <laughs> Ball security. Come on now. <laughs> we can't.
guys, we can't put the football on the ground. 7-14 and counting to go. The Cowboys will kick it away here on a fourth down and two. Fair catch called by Washington State. And they take care of it, though, not easily done that time by Leon Brooks as the Cougars are going to back here with close to seven minutes to go. 47-yard punt. Now, Dana Holgerson, if you haven't followed, uh, has had an interesting trail to Stillwater with the years at Oklahoma State as the offensive coordinator. Yes, Mike Leach calling the plays, but Dana, very in part, big part of that. And look at the numbers as the total offense and where they rank. And then he goes to Houston under Kevin Sumlin. And huge numbers for the Cougars. And, and last year, of course, Houston came in here and knocked off Oklahoma State and went on to a terrific year. And thus, Holgerson moves up here as the offensive coordinator Th that game had a huge impact on the on the reason that he is here uh, the fact that he was the coordinator of the team that came in here and beat such a highly ranked Oklahoma State team first and ten line is brought to you by Phillips televisions I love that shot of him too <laughs> got the you know got the hair going I love that uh, offense has this mis mysterious type of you know the mad scientist who's behind the <laughs> offense who's thinking up all these plays well it's that guy Dana Holgerson <laughs> looking on now as the Cowboy defense trying to stiff it up second and eight loose football still on the ground Cowboys have it I believe yes they do so they'll get another scoring opportunity here the diehards aren't going anywhere you got a paddle in your hand, yeah. it's mandatory that you stay. Yeah, no doubt. Bill Young's going to be happy with that, although it's just a quarterback center exchange problem. Number nine, Marshall Lobestall of Washington State was in the football game, replacing Jeff Toole. Fumbled the snap. That happens a lot. I, I can tell you one thing. There's a lot of things I was nervous about, and, and probably the main thing I was always nervous about was just getting the snap because mm -hmm. it's such an awkward thing to actually get. We don't see it a lot in college football anymore with all the shotgun stuff, but uh, it's still there. It's still part of the game. Larry Stevens with the recovery, and Deaton hands off to Jeremy Smith. Slips and no gain at the 14, and Buchanan makes the play there for the Washington State Cougars. You know, for the Boston run two. for the run game to work out of the shotgun, you, you've got to win the line of scrimmage. You, you can't be pushed back into the backfield, and that time, the offensive line, uh, 74, Alex Reitenauer for for Oklahoma State. I believe it was him. He was kind of pushed back into the off into the offensive backfield. That can't that can't happen if if you want to run the football out of the shotgun. Deaton delivers over the middle and complete. And that was Grant Gardner, the center number 74 for Oklahoma State. Just to correct myself there. Uh, Cowboys come up with the reception to Charlie Moore. His first grab of the night as we got 517 and counting. Johnny Deaton, the freshman from Sand Springs, Oklahoma, the quarterback here, the third of the night after Whedon retired early. Great performance. Handoff plowing ahead. Jeremy Smith. Smith 5'10, 203. In that one game against Grambling last year, we yep. had 160 yards rushing, including a 69-yarder. Needed to get all the way to the two-yard line to get a first down. That looks exactly like where our, our first and ten line is. It's going to be close. And fourth down. Brandon Whedon. When your third-string quarterback is in, you can go for it here. Does Whedon get a look for his baseball glove now when he puts on the baseball <laughs> cap? That's what I want to know. Smith didn't get in again. But did get the first yeah, down. So it'll be a fresh set down. of downs there for Oklahoma State. Good run. You'd like to see him have a little bit better nose for the goal line, punch that thing across. But I like what Oklahoma State is doing. They're not sitting here throwing the football right, on Washington right. State. Your third two string guys are in there. You just hand the football off and work on getting tougher up front. Because you, know, you know what? Both teams need that. Mizell made the tackle. And first and goal now. Again, Smith, the running back beside Deaton. 
this time he will score. So Oklahoma State with 57 now. And Smith gets his second touchdown as a Cowboy. Had that one in the Grambling game a year ago in his first of this season tonight. He's an impressive back. You know, he, he is a redshirt freshman, even though he did play in that one game because he got injured, got his redshirt year back, had those 160 yards, but he's the type of guy that can provide some depth at a key position so you don't tire out Kendall Hunter. You know, Kendall Hunter can't necessarily take it 60 times a game. That's why you need a guy like Jeremy Smith. Oklahoma State, all over Washington State, 58-17. Welcome back with it 58 17 Cowboys well in check here. Let's check out the sprint epic play of the game. Wheaton's first TD pass. Yeah there was, the there was no doubt about this one. This was the best thrown ball of the night up and over the cornerback Anthony Carpenter of Washington State. Beautiful pass on the outside shoulder for Justin Blackman. That was his first TD pass on his route to three total 22 of 30 218 for Brandon Whedon really sensational lad. he was very impressive I know he didn't necessarily you know blow the doors off as far as yards go only 218 yards but everything was accurate he was managing the game he, he rallied the troops when Washington State made a run at them 17 10 what they do they come out you give it to Kendall Hunter you allow Whedon to complete some passes get everybody settled down and that's what happened it, he played absolutely terrific this is the type of offense that a it will be perfectly suited for Brandon Whedon. Go out and manage the game. And I don't know why that word has bad connotations attached to it for, for quarterbacks or for football players. You, every quarterback is a game manager. And, and the best ones in the world are Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. Yeah. Drew Brees right behind that. I mean, every quarterback has got to manage the game. Well, you just saw the yardage total and the play total. And there's something we want to talk about in that area. For Washington State, Marshall Lobestall is back on as the quarterback, the junior from Oak Harbor, Michigan. He threw for 655 yards, three scores, and eight picks last year as he and Tool were splitting the time. And Lobestall, there's his numbers from a year ago. And with 314 to go, it's second and nine. As he hands off the football, not much of a game. But Joel, I wanted to ask you that 80 plays that OSU has run, Bill That's Young a made a point play. yesterday to us that defensively for the coordinator, he goes, we have to be in better shape. Our offense is going to run a ton of plays every night. We're going to be out there. We're going to score quickly many times. And it's kind of changed everything defensively as well. It has. Here, hasn't it? it has. Well, the only thing that I'd be concerned about if I were Bill Young is the lack of, of toughness that you get in practice because you're not necessarily defending the powers defending yeah. that downhill running scheme that can toughen up your defense a little bit. Uh, you know, iron sharpens iron type of deal. And Bill Young talked about that. He said, well, there, there are periods during the football practice that we'll come down and we'll have the one offense or the two offense run those. And they'll mm -hmm. run them off of cards just to make sure that we're still tough and, and, and getting all that type of work up front for our defense. But he did talk about the tempo. And 80 plays tonight for this offense, which will be tacked on uh, here after this this punt by Washington State. That's a ton of plays. That defense from Washington State is going to need about eight Gatorades and three waters on the flight home. <laughs> yeah, tough, tough night for the Cougars, who next week will play Montana State. The punt is blocked, and it is grabbed and scored. Touchdown, Oklahoma State with the TD. That was Blackman. Justin Blackman, who already had three scores on the receiving end, takes in the block punt. Oh, mama. OSU with 64 points. 22 with a block. James, James Thomas. Thomas made his first start tonight at linebacker. Speed and athleticism. This yeah. is what it does for you. 64 to 17 and Bailey for the point after hasn't missed one in his career and is still perfect 65 to 17 with 220 remaining. That's why a lot of people are, are starting to shy away from I know that this is the fad to get the wide splits on the punt but some people uh, tend to shy away from that. I know one being Pat Jones who used to tell me in the studio last year all the time he said, guys that's not the way to do it. 
And, and the reason is you create lanes for them to rush that are inside lanes. And a lot of times guys could just run up there and if your wall is not secure or if there's a bobbled snap or anything like that, you're gonna get the pump blocked. And that's what we just saw from Oklahoma State. Tell you what, speaking of being in shape, whew, yep. You These guys, be. they're in great shape, but they're tested now. Are, are they switching off? And I got to <laughs> go, what's harder, holding the board above your head or doing the push-ups? Yeah, guys are going, somebody's counting, aren't they? <laughs> Talk about a machine. <laughs> I think the guys with the paddles Wait behind them are counting. And now somebody goes, that's 40. Yeah. Boom. Switch, guys, switch. Yeah. I, I'm done. I'm at 62. We need three more. <laughs> All part of the great fun of college football. There's nothing, nothing like, like it. the whole game day experience. Ain't that the truth? It's different at every school. It's great fun. Hope to see you at a game soon, huh? Oklahoma State having their way tonight, 65 to 10. And Washington State will be at home next week for the opener against Montana State. And then they go to SMU. The one team they beat a year ago in overtime. This one nearly sails out of the end zone. The Cougars will bring it out with 2.20 to go. And speaking of SMU, they'll make Texas Tech tomorrow out in Lubbock. All right, around the Big 12 today, Colorado, your old school, Tyler That's Hansen, right. big day. They were impressive in their win over CSU. You know, and the fact that he's he's playing quarterback for the Buffs, I think gives a lot of people hope, but kind of a dual threat type of guy. A lot of defensive coordinators didn't want to see him in the football game a year ago. Daniel Thomas, that's a huge day, 234 yards on the ground. Kind of a, another reason why we're tapping this a year of the running back in, in the Big 12 Conference. And then Robert Griffin there on the end. Blaine Gabbard had a good day in the win over Illinois, but Robert Griffin, I am just looking forward to watching this kid play football. It was such a shame last year he went out with that injury. I really believe that Robert Griffin gave them a chance last year to go to a bowl game, mm -hmm. their first since 94 when they went to the Alamo Bowl. I still believe that. His presence alone, 63 yards on the ground, 236 through the air, he, he is the best dual threat quarterback in the country. Say what you want about Terrell Pryor and some of the other guys around the Robert Griffin is the guy. He can throw the football, he can run the football with the best of them. And by the way, those heroes, because all of those Big 12 schools were winners in those games, and Washington State here keeping it on the ground here with just 140 to go. And Carpenter rather trying to get the tackle on that play as they'll have a third down and eight coming up. Leron Fur, redshirt yeah. freshman running back, 6'2, 230. I know I've said this a lot, but they've got some impressive individuals on this team. These young freshmen are all big. They can mm -hmm. run. You know, the future is looking very bright at Oklahoma State. Not to say that it's not looking bright now, because you know why? You got Kendall Hunter on your team, Brandon <laughs> Wheaton. They're doing a sensational job as it is. Lobostal hands it off again. And they capture that block punt. They're saying, hey, let's give Mitz a few carries and let's see if we get anything and let's go ahead and head for the bus and get to Stillwater International to fly back to Washington State and Pullman. Be a long trip home for Paul Wolf. Your thoughts of seeing the Cougars? We we knew what yeah. they'd been through. Sure. They've had the culture change. They're buying in. How much better are they, do you think? And is this game a true valuation? You know, the score is, I, I, I don't want to say about what I expected. I, I thought Oklahoma State was a better football team tonight. I, I will say that I, I really do think Paul Wolf is doing a good job. They, they have uh, taken the high road on some red shirts that they could have uh, pulled off of kids in order to maybe win one or two more games the last couple of years. But they're doing it the right way. And I saw some I saw some fire in them in the second quarter coming back from 17-0 to make it 17 to 10. There's something there to build on. I think that they're starting to get some of those cornerstones, one of those being Jeff Toole. The six foot three, 214 pound sophomore quarterback. I thought he did some nice things. Um, Marquise Wilson, true freshman on the outside, but I thought he was very, very impressive. 
the one thing that they're going to have to shore up that defense you, you can't give up that amount of yards on the ground and expect to be in football games so that defense is going to have to get better they're going to have to continue to work continue to build on what they have but Paul Wolf will, will win some games this year and that guy right there Mike Gundy they're going to win plenty of games this year because what they proved tonight Bill they did not they did not come into this season to rebuild they reloaded yeah. and we saw that tonight well and a career night for Hunter with 257 12th best single game rushing total in OSU history Barry Sanders owning let's see one two three four five <laughs> of those Thurman Thomas Ernest Anderson Morrency I mean there's some great names yep. David Thompson good, ahead very of him good backs. at a place that has been known as tailback you and on a night when everybody expected the air raid they ran it for almost 300 yards tonight. 293 I believe is the final total so and think uh, about this very impressive Barry Sanders and what he was able to do in 1988 and in that sensational season and over the course of his career as he was a backup for Thurman Thomas at this point Kendall Hunter is about 700 yards away from Barry Sanders all time at Oklahoma State yeah he will catch him this year and that's the, the kind of company that this kid is keeping he was sensational tonight as were most of the Cowboys as Hunter got over 200 of those yards in the first half tonight and Oklahoma State took control midway through the first half after having a 17 0 lead trimmed to 17 to 10 they led 38 10 at intermission and very impressive performance let's send it down to Emily with head coach Mike Gundy. Mike 65 points you've got to be happy about that offensively defensively it seemed like you guys shored things up there in the second half as well. Well I thought overall we played pretty well we took care of the football and we, we tackled well in space. Um, so it was a good start for us. We need to eliminate some penalties. We had a couple dumb penalties in the second half. But for the most part, the guys played hard and, and made some plays today. We had some guys make plays that we would expect, being Kendall Hunter and a few other guys that hadn't done a lot that made a few plays. Have to feel good about your backfield with Whedon and Hunter. Well, Whedon played pretty well, and then obviously Kendall played good. Uh, we've got to develop another back. We've got to get one of those young guys to step up so we can make some plays and give Kendall a break. The joke in the booth that maybe Barry Switzer may have called you at halftime and told you to go easy so he, uh, Kendall didn't break his record. Well, I was a little concerned about them breaking our rushing records here. <laughs> and, uh, and I told him that on the headset, don't make us look bad. We've worked hard to do that for four years. You guys come in and rush for a lot. So, But I was really pleased with the way the guys um, ran the football effectively. Yeah, so much for you guys just passing the ball, huh? Well, that's what... That's what uh, I was thinking during the game. And uh, Dana said, I'm enjoying running it. And I said, I'm with you. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Thanks, That's right. Coach. Thank you. Appreciate the time. Congratulations on the win, Bill. Back up to you. All right. Very impressive for Whedon getting his first college start, lining it up. Blackman scores four touchdowns. And of course, Kendall Hunter had another impressive night. Next week, college football quadruple header. First, number 17, Georgia Tech faces Kansas and Lawrence. The Colorado faces Cal, followed by Wyoming traveling to number four, Texas. And finally, it'll be Virginia against USC. For Joel Platt, Emily Jones, our entire college football Saturday crew, this is Bill Lance saying so long from Stillwater.